Mike Gottfried. His team is six and three this year. They lost out to Penn State last year, 34-14. And just seconds ago, his pregame talk to his troops. And tonight we get an opportunity in front of the nation's audience again to go out in a great crowd out here, a great home crowd that's been out here for a long time, <coughs> chanting and cheering. To again take the pride of our program. When you leave that door tonight, I'm going to tell you something. You represent a great university in football that has put it on the line a long time. And what you need to do is do your part tonight. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to win the football game. Whatever happens in this ball game is to stay on course. Offensively, that's just every play. Take a little bit out of them. Every play is move the football. Defensively, alert the whole way. Special teams alert. We're getting better in all those areas. Mike and the Panthers allowing our ESPN camera and microphones in for that private chat. And there he is, Mike Gottfried. 11 victories, 8 losses, 1 tie in his second year. There is Jeff Van Horn, the sophomore out of Cheyenne, Washington. He's 5'9". He's got a great leg. And back deep for the Penn State Nittany Lions. There's number 44, Leroy Thompson. He averages just under 25 yards on the kickoff returns. And over on the lower right-hand side of your screen, there is Gary Brown, who averages about 19 yards on his kickoff returns. So it is the 87th renewal. This rivalry goes way back to 1893. 63 of the 86 games played here in Pittsburgh. The battle for a cut of the Commonwealth. A sellout crowd, and we are underway. End over end. At the three, it's Gary Brown, a convoy in front of him. And at the 17-yard line, Brown is upended. Let's meet the Penn State Nittany Lions after that 15-yard kickoff return. Quarterback Matt Kisner, they run a very conservative offense. He may be able to do more than they really ask him to do. Green is the fullback. Blair Thomas, one of the best offensive backs in the entire country. Michael Timpson, a speed burner, a track guy. Alexander has improved over the past two weeks. A very fine offensive line. Sickler been a starter all year. Freeman stepped in because of injury. The front three excellent. Wisniewski made the best of that three. Backs are split. And it goes to Blair Thomas, who is tripped up by Jerry Osowski, the middle defensive linebacker. Let's check now that Pitt Panther defense. Well, as good a front four as you'll find in the country. Spindler, of course, a high school freshman. Syracuse of playing with a little banged up knee. Carter, the captain of the team. Grossman has five sacks. He leads that defensive front. Linebackers are excellent. Osowski, he calls the signals. Gatson, the big play guy, 21 and a half sacks. Defensive cornerbacks are tough. Richard playing a little bit banged up tonight. Jones a good one. Owens maybe an All-American. They're solid. Timpson wide left at the bottom of your screen. Double tight end. Humphrey 88. Marasco 89. Quick hitter. Not much doing. Up front for Johnny Green out of Youngstown, Ohio. The senior, John Carter. The senior right defensive end. And Jerry Wall on the stop defensively for Pitt. The Penn State people felt that they could go right at Mark Spindler. And one of the reasons, he's a freshman and he gets high. See, if his hat is higher than the offensive player, he's too high. You know, he gets turned around and spun down. He needs to learn as a freshman. Even though he's got the size, he's got to stay low. On the goal line, that could be devastating, and we'll follow it for you tonight. There's Kisner on third and six. Alexander and Timpson wide at the top of your screen. Panthers showing blitz, and here they come. Kisner with the dancing feet. Penalty flag is down. Timpson pulls, and it's at the 25-yard line. Stacked up shy of first down yardage. Osafsky, the junior out of Youngstown on the stop. Time is out with 13.24 left, and there's a flag to be checked out. Holding against Penn State. So Kisner was stopped way shy of first down yardage had to get it up near the 27 yard line. Let's see if we can pick up the penalty now. Maybe Tim Freeman the junior out of Virginia Beach right side of the screen watch number 71 in white. Well Jimmy Penn State is the type of team that does not like to get into situations. They need big yardage on first and second down. They don't want to get into a passing situation and that's why. You see Freeman holding them. They don't like to be predictable. Zeke Gatson did a great job on that play covering a tight end all the way across the field. That's who they wanted to go to. Kisner couldn't find him. And Pittsburgh was able to hold Penn State. Chris Klaus and back deep Terrell Austin. Averaging about eight yards on his punt returns. Panthers should come out of this with good field position. A line drive. Austin moves up to the 38. Explodes to the 45. Approaches midfield. And 
and is hammered backwards at the 47-yard line. Here come the Panthers of Mike Godfrey. Darnell Dickerson, not a finished product yet, but he's got all the tools, the feet and, uh, and the arm and just about everything. He's a good player. Craig Hayward, the leading rusher in the nation, all of 275 pounds. Vernon Kirk at tight end will be starting his first game. Reggie Williams, the leading receiver for this team. And Tom Ricketts, a guy who has to block a little differently for Darnell Dickerson. Roman Matus having a big year. Middle three, excellent. Stepnowski and Cal McGuire having big years. With the aggressive linebacking core of Penn State, they expect Hayward on a counter all night. They open up with a counter. Penn State stayed in their lanes, and Trey Bauer, the leading tackler, the senior out of Paramus, New Jersey, on the initial hit. Here come the Penn State defenders. A difficult team to fool. Kirkendall is a great player, a, a, just a super pass rusher, the best of the front three. The linebackers, we talked about them in the open, Karpinski and Vernier, they've all been injured this year. Bauer, the leading tackler, Giftopoulos playing with a broken hand, a defensive secondary banged up, downing in place of the starter, Wilkerson starting, but good players, all of them, very solid. Osborne and Williams wide to the right. Panthers looking at second down and nine. Darnell Dickerson, the freshman on a sprint out, will pull it down. Across the midfield stripe, out of bounds at the 49-yard line of Penn State. Brian Chismar, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, bumped him out. This is what Dickerson can do for you now. He's the back that's uncovered. You see the action going? A lot of blocking on the corner. Watch the blocking and the hook block on the corner. And now Dickerson, he can fly six foot four, long legs, and he can run. And they will ask him to run all night. That'll put a lot of pressure on the Penn State defense. There is an exciting young man. He has only played seven quarters so far for Mike Gottfried. Mike said he tried for about five games to get him into the lineup. He went, to the, went with the experience of Sal Janela. Finally made the change. And the youngster has responded. Third and four. Delay to Riddick. Riddick first down at the 43-yard line of Penn State. One of the things you do against a very big, tough, aggressive front is your cross block. Watch the left side. 64, Caliguire, and number 71, Ricketts. Cross block. They develop an angle, and bang, Riddick right up through the middle for a first down. Here's your inside linebacker. See how they react. See how Ricketts comes out. He's able to pick up the linebacker, Bauer, and it's a first down. Dickerson's first pass. You'll see his arm. Safety bounds it out. Gets it to Riddick. Back at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up. Scott Gobb, the junior out of Pittsburgh, on the stop. Conspicuous by his absence, Craig Hayward. He has not run the ball yet, and that's because of this guy, Darnell Dickerson. They want him to handle the ball early. He's just a freshman, first time against Penn State. They want him to get his confidence. But you'll see plenty of Hayward before this game's over. Number 34. You can't miss him. He's a semi. There he is. Henry Tooten out wide to the right at the bottom of the screen. Michael Stewart wide left. Dickerson, they fake the reverse. Darnell pulls it down. He's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Good job by Penn State. They are so well coached, Penn State. You can fool them for a while, but in the end, you're just going to have to play good, solid football against the Nittany Lions. This is a defense that pretty much won the national title last year. Coached by that man, Joe Paterno. You know, against, uh, against the Miami team, when you hold them to 10 points, you're doing pretty well last year in the national title game. Third and nine, slot to the left. Williams, Osborne, Hosea Hurd, bottom of the screen. Dickerson going there. Fires caught at the 31. Was he inbounds? He was. Reggie Williams on a comeback. Willie Thomas, the freshman, spun around on the coverage. A 10-yard pickup. They needed nine. They say this guy's a runner, but they also say he's a good drop-back passer. He doesn't have happy feet. He will jump around in the pocket, and here's an example of it. Dickerson, young man, just standing there, and then the rifle arm. Reggie Williams coming in, averaging almost 17 yards a catch. He's a good receiver, makes the fine catch, keeps his legs in bounds. Dickerson, 42. He's two for two on the night for 16 yards. He's thrown one touchdown, two interceptions. Out of the eye pro set. Hayward, the tailback, it goes to Riddick, the fullback. Hammers ahead behind the blocking up front of Miller, Caliguire, and Stepnoski. Picks up three, second down and seven. The man has never 
lost at Pitt Stadium. Osborne wide to the left. Eric Seaman, Vernon Kirk as they go with a double tight end on second and seven. Dickerson batted down at the 25 by Keith Karpinski. Karpinski, 6'4", 222, the senior out of Hamtramck, Michigan. Well, make no mistake about it, when these linebackers play together, they're as good as any unit in the country, and Karpinski is one of the best of the four. Great reactions. They know how to read offenses. They know even what's going on behind them without even turning around, just by looking at the flow. Karpinski getting his arm up and doing the job. And Kevin, if there's a wrap against Dickerson, in addition to inexperience, it might be that he tries to force because he does have that great gun. That one was batted up in the air and almost intercepted. Intended for Hayward, Karpinski deflected the ball and actually had a shot to come up with the interception. It's, it's recognition, Jim. When you play linebacker, it's, you feel things. And Karpinski felt the last one. Watch him feel this. He knows there's a back out there, and he can just feel it. See him starting to drift, and then he doesn't come at the quarterback because he knows there's a back out there. It was Hayward. He gets up, uses that 6-4 frame of his to knock it down. That's instinct, folks. You can't coach that. A 44-yard try. Van Horn, as you see, three out of seven from that distance. His longest, 52 yards. Second, his longest is 47. Osborne puts it down on its way. It's good. A 44-yarder by Jeff Van Horn, the sophomore. He's only 5'9". So the Pitt Panthers get three on their initial possession. ESPN's presentation of CFA football is being brought to you by AC Delco. Stay out of trouble with AC Delco parts. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. Spotting the ball. Jeff Van Horn with that 44 yard field goal to put Pittsburgh up three to nothing. It was Van Horn that had that 29 yarder against Notre Dame last year to ice that 10 to 9 pit upset over the Irish. There is Van Horn and back deep. There is Leroy Thompson and Gary Brown coming into your picture now and it will be Leroy Brown at the five. Leroy Thompson check it. Thompson across the 20 down at the 22. A 16-yard return by Leroy Thompson, the scoring drive. There is Jeff Van Horn, the super sophomore, 10 plays, 27 yards, and they used up under three minutes. Important, I think, too, that Pittsburgh scored first in this game. You don't want to get behind Penn State by 10, by 7. Not with that linebacking core and that great defense. Penn State's one of those teams you have to believe that you can beat them, and the only way to do it is to physically overmatch them on the field and get some points. It did that. Penalty flag is down. Nelson Walker, the right defensive end, jumped off sides. So instead of first and ten, it will be first and five. Set ball, left side, on the defense, five yards, first down. Well, we talked about it in that first series. The Panthers got Penn State in a third and long situation, and that's what makes this penalty especially harmful. It gives them the opportunity to use their whole offense right away at first and five. You need to get Penn State stuffed on first down, second down, give them that third long. They're not a great passing team, and you need to put them in passing situations. First down penalties, no good. Alexander wide to the far side. Timpson comes to the near side. Mark Spindler, the freshman, maybe the most highly recruited freshman last year on the stop. He's a great athlete, and he's worked his way into the starting lineup. But as we talked about him, he's a kid that will get high. This is typical of a freshman, getting his hat higher. See how he gets his hat higher? See, look at the positioning on the offensive blocker pushing him backwards. And that's because you let him get into your chest. You have got to get your hat down below his. Second and a short one. He came in with four and a half sacks. He was a runaway freight train. He's not big, he's not strong, but he's unquestionably the smartest member of the defense. 
They don't check off. They don't pick it up. They needed the zone block that and block everybody down. Osofsky right through the center and gets Kisner. This is a guy that sat out some of the games. He was injured early in the year, and it was devastating to the Pittsburgh defense. They need him in there. He calls all the signals. The coaches say that his quickness makes up for his lack of size. He's not a great 50 linebacker. What do they mean by that? I'll tell you in a minute. On third and ten, play action fake. Kisner pulls it down, unloads. He's got Johnny Green loose. Football. Pittsburgh's got it at the 33. Osatsky comes right back. And we just talked about his quickness making up for his lack of size. Jerry Wall, 51, will force the fumble. This is a great defensive unit. They know exactly where to go and what to do when they get there. Now watch him strip the ball. Gatson at great speed, stripping the ball loose on the back. Pressure on Kisner. Kisner's had a rough, rough year, folks, and it's not getting any better. Wall knocking him down and maybe causing a problem, although he did complete the pass. Give him credit for that. That, that shows you really the linebackers. One linebacker made the hit in the backfield. The other linebacker forced the fumble, and I believe the third linebacker recovered it. And Kisner very slow to get up after that tremendous hit put on him by number 51, Jerry Wall. This is a little bit reminiscent of when the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame came in. We did that game, and the Panthers rolled up to a quick 28-0 lead. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh very poised right now, taking advantage of some penalties, taking advantage of that turnover, and they've got great field position at the 38. Well, they had some problems offensively, and that can wear on you defensively. When you don't feel your offense can score points, and Pittsburgh's offense stalled a lot early in the year, it can get you down emotionally. They feel differently now, and they're up. In the eye pro set, right and Hayward are the running backs. The tailback, of course, is Ironhead. Dickerson over the middle on the post, wide open. Reggie Williams inside the five. A 29-yard pickup. The arm, he's got that strong arm. He puts a little bit of touch on this. Now, he's inside the zone, but he's not that open. That's a great throw by Dickerson. Right in the chest of Williams. And I'll tell you right away, you see a different offense here with Dickerson in there. We've had these guys twice before. Reggie Williams catching the ball, Dickerson throwing it, and they do everything a little quicker. Working on the pressure from the left cornerback, Willie Thomas. First and goal from the four. Full out back here. Dickerson, that looked like a busted play. He looked like he was supposed to hand off, and there was nobody there. Well, they're showing a wishbone formation because they want to stretch the defense and create a seam. Here you're looking at Bauer from the back, number 35. Dickerson down the line. Bauer just following him, following him. And everybody, Gatopoulos, everybody coming in to get him. Penn State's defense, that 34 with the very active linebackers, is an excellent defense against the wishbone. Second and goal from the seventh. Slide to the left, Michael Stewart, the senior out of Norwalk, Ohio. Hayward in the backfield. He's got the ball. And the Nittany Lions have got Ironhead. Keith Karpinski, the left outside linebacker, the senior out of Hamtramck, and Matt Johnson, the senior out of York, Pennsylvania, on the stop. Penn State will dare you to throw the ball on the goal line. They'll go with a nine-man line, and they'll force, and they'll play gap defense and come after you. Now, the ball is just about in the middle of the field. I would look for Dickerson on this play, some kind of a rollout pass run option. We've got the mobile quarterback. He's got a gun for an arm. It's a little wider on the left side of the field. I would expect him to roll a little bit left. Osborne and Williams are slotted out to the left. Blitz. There is the quick feet, and the good arm. He'll just throw it away. Pressure by Brian Chismar, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh. And Dickerson not playing like a freshman right there. Kevin showed poise. They'll take the field goal. Well, this is an excellent defensive call, Jim, by the Penn State people, and a good job by Dickerson. Now, this is a dash. This is a set play. They wanted him to go left. They just didn't want to have guys forcing him. 
and not have a chance to throw a decent pass. But you're right, Dickerson unloads the ball well out of bounds, so there's no turnover, and they can still get the three points. Good call by Penn State. They will pressure you inside. They gave Maryland fits last week. Maryland got inside there 20 a few times, couldn't get any points. A 24-yard field goal, hash mark to the right. Van Horn has had problems with a hash mark to the left side, but he did win the West Virginia game from the left hand. On its way. No good. So the Penn State Nittany Lions come in right 16th. They fumble the ball. They gave it over to the Panthers in good field position and dodged a bullet. Zeke Gatson and Matt Kisner. They'll see a lot of each other before this one is through. From the 20. They'll sprint out all kinds of time. Matt can pull it down will dive for three yards in the grasp of Jerry Osaski. Penn State drives, Kevin, have started at their own 17, their own 22, and their own 20. And they're not getting too far, and that's because they're playing against the eighth-ranked defense in the nation. Here's Osofsky reading pass, deepening up. Now he knows he's running, and he releases himself, able to chase the play down. Not big, Olsowski, but as I said, a key member of this defense and very, very smart. He identifies all new formations, lets the other guys know what's going on. Ray Thomas cracks it over the right side. Blocking by Duffy, Wisniewski, and Freeman. Jerry Wall, the senior, has him there. 6'3", 220. Back like that, you need to contain him. Pitt did that. Their outside people got upfield a little bit and turned him in. They're very concerned with overrunning the play. They had to slow down. John Fox was telling us they had to slow down their defensive pursuit during practice, getting ready for Penn State. They didn't want their backside people running too far, getting sealed off, and having Blair Thomas run back to the other side. Alexander wide, bottom of your screen. Timpson at the top on third and five. Motion by Timpson. Grossman on the stop. That was another good job by Olsowski. Now that thing should have gone for a first down. Olsowski had no chance to make the tackle, but he took an outside lane, cut off Blair Thomas, made him go back inside where the rest of the defense could catch up. Good team defense. One of ten children, Chris Klaus right there. His only punt so far in the night, 38 yards to that man. Terrell Austin, who averages just under, partially blocked, hits at the 48-yard line and bounds backwards, finally killed by the Nittany Lions there. Matt Lavinia got a piece of that ball. It's only a 24-yard punt. The Panthers come right back when we come back. There's our score and our time left under five minutes. The Panthers have started at their own 46 and at the Penn State 33. This one starts at the 49 of Pitt. Seaman and Kirk, double tight end for Dickerson, bends in. Ironhead, penalty flag is down. And Kevin, he took three Penn State Nittany Lions with him from midfield for four yards. Well, preseason, Jim, uh, Ironhead was kind of a... I don't know. He was low density iron. He only weighed about 260, but 12 pizzas later, as you see a holding penalty on Pittsburgh. The guy's up to 275 pounds. And when you ask the coaches about it now, they used to talk diets. Now they just shrug their shoulders. He is amazing. Leads the nation in rushing. And you saw a good example of it right there with three Nittany Lions just clinging to him. He dragged them for four yards. That's a big, big penalty against Pitt. That'll really put him in the hole. A holding penalty on first down. Type of thing you can't do against Penn State. You know, Joe Paterno, as I talked about his philosophy in the open, don't make mistakes. And since most mistakes are made offensively, he has a conservative offense, as you can see. Uh, Pittsburgh, making a mistake, puts themselves, starting with great field position, Jim, they go way back on first down. Now first and 20. Coming out wide to the right. Michael Stewart, number 30, out of Norwalk, Ohio. And the slot is Billy Osborne, out of Wildwood Press, New Jersey. Second and 20 after that Pitt Panther penalty. Dickerson, right on the money to Stewart. And Stewart for a first down. They're saying his knee was down at the 49-yard line. 
Strength of arm. Now, Stewart only had eight catches coming into this game, but he wasn't catching them from this guy. Now, this is a pretty good zone. The difference is this is a gun. Now, this is slow motion, folks, and he's just rifling that ball right into the chest of Michael Stewart. Now, these guys' statistics are going to go up. All the receivers' statistics go up because he can get the ball there in a hurry. It takes a defense a while to adjust to that, too. They're not used to seeing a guy who can rifle a ball that hard. did a nice job on Karpinski. Somebody hit him first and then Craig Hayward came in and finished the job. Knocked number 84 right on his back. Extra added dimension. That man Darnell Dickerson he can run take the ball and run to the sideline. If he ever gets his shoulders turned up field he's gone. He's one of those guys the coaches call an immediate impact player. Well they were trying to get him in for about five or six games. The games were all too close. Mike finally said the heck with it in Syracuse. He put him in and he's glad he did. Osborne and Williams wide to the right on third and five. Dickerson, he'll spread out. It's that floating pocket all day to throw. Nobody's open. Safety valves to Riddick. Riddick dives to the 47. No gain. Trey Bauer on the stop. Senior linebacker out of Paramus. 44 tackles coming in. Keith Karpinski, now they know they have to contain this guy, so he gets his hands. On Riddick, the blocker. See that? Now that's great upper body strength. He's able to stay in front of Dickerson. Dickerson finally just tosses the ball to the guy that was blocking him. Rasp will hang it high. Coach is back deep. Fair catches at the 12. A 35 yard punt. No return. 304 left to go. Penn State held scoreless. Pitts got three. Along with Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Sold Out Pitt Stadium here at the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela River. From the 12 yard line, Humphrey and Orozco, the double tight ends in there now for Joe Paterno. Penn State rushing, eight carries, just nine yards. And Blair Thomas upended, one yard shot. Zeke Ganson tripped him up for a loss of one second and 11 coming up. Coming up tomorrow night, the 7 and 1 surprising San Diego Chargers. But before, it all starts with NFL Game Day preview, Sunday showdown in the National Football League. And of course, NFL primetime with highlights of all the afternoon games. And then we get to the Chargers and the Raiders. Mike Patrick, Roy Firestone, and guest analyst John Matusak. The twos. Now he wasn't on low lead when he played. How's he going to be in the booth? The twos is a repeat performer. He was good the first time. Back again for an encore. The NFL comes to ESPN. <laughs> Penalty against the Pitt Panthers. Moves the ball up now to the 26 yard line. A personal foul call against the Pitt Panthers. Otherwise it was second and 11. So that's a co very costly call. Alexander and Coates are the wide receivers. Coates out of Niles, Ohio, 49. And Alexander in the slot. Not much doing behind Duffy, Kuzi, and Wisniewski. Osafsky on the stop again. He hammered Johnny Green out of Youngstown. Osaski's only 212. That's got to be dripping wet. And it's got to be less than that at this point. Spindler, 93, still a little bit high, getting driven back. Osaski, you can see the middle linebacker actually steps up, number 55, inside his own tackle to make the tackle. That's good play by Osaski, but Spindler, again, as I say, he should not be that high. He creates some problems. And they are determined to run on this, what is about a nine man line for Pittsburgh. Penn State trying to run on Kisner just gets rid of it. Caught at the 40 yard line by Michael Timpson. And that will be a Penn State first down, a 13 yard pickup. And the senior out of Pompano Beach, Florida, number seven, Quentin Jones, beaten on the play. Well, Timpson is a guy who's a track guy. He missed last spring because he was with the track team. He was injured in the preseason. His routes haven't been that good. But when you can make a catch like that, you don't have to run great routes. That's been the problem with the Penn State offense. It's not so much Kisner as the receivers are young, inexperienced, and they have yet to learn to run precise routes. Didn't hurt in that case, though. Long count by Kisner. 
Safety valve unloads, got his man, bounces off a couple of Panthers, Michael Alexander, and hammer down at the 46. Spindler, the freshman out of West Granton, Pennsylvania, and Billy Owens on the stop. Again, you saw the pit people blitzing, coming up to the line, just daring Penn State to throw the ball. Penn State does not want to throw the ball. They'd rather run the ball with Blair Thomas, but Pitt is just shutting it down, going man-to-man -man on the corners and forcing Kisner to throw those quick patterns. Maybe, Kevin, one of the reasons they don't want to throw the ball at the coaches' meeting last night, the coaches told us their passing game, about 50% of what they thought it would be at this point in the year. Meanwhile, the running game is at 90%. Tipson coming near side. Blair Thomas going nowhere. Knife down at the 45, and Spindler again on the stop. You have the great players in the secondary. It allows you, when you go to man coverage, it allows you to do so much more against the run. And that's what Pitt's doing. They're going to make Penn State beat them at the corners with the pass. And they're going to put the rest of the guys in to stop the run. And it's worked very well so far. Penn State not able to move it all on the ground. Passing situation now. Timpson comes wide left. Alexander wide right. Panthers show the blitz and come. Kisner throws it into the tuba section. On his back at the 30-yard line, Osavsky came unimpeded right up the middle. Watch 55. Does he look like he's 212 to you? Well, there's nobody to block him, Jim. And here's a perfect example. The corner's doing a great job. See, that's not a it's not an immediate blitz. It's a read blitz. He sees what's happening, sees a hole open up, and he goes. Now he has that ability if he wants to to shoot the gap if he sees one. And there's the result. Kisner had to throw it away, the secondary right there in that box, man for man, on the receivers. Busy night so far for Chris, and back is Terrell Austin. This is a beautiful spiraling kick. Austin backs up to the five. Never made it to the 15-yard line. Probably should have let it go into the end zone. A 50-yard kick, a nine-yard return. Time has expired. Yeah, Penn State yeah. lead or Penn State trailing Pittsburgh three nothing. Jim Kelly along with Kevin Kiley and welcome back to Pittsburgh where the Panthers lead the Nittany Lions three to nothing. Panthers start deep in their own territory though at their own 14. Osborne and Williams wide left and right. Dickerson hot hand in the first quarter. Airborne to start the second. Right on the money at the 20 yard line. He's got. The Reggie Williams and they say incomplete storyline Pittsburgh Pennsylvania Jeff Van Horn the only scoring a 44 yard field goal Dickerson the freshman five of nine 31 yards and stayed only eight yards rushing and Zeke Gadsden with seven tackles now about the containment on Blair Thomas hey that's what the defensive coordinator John Fox told us at practice on Thursday the Panthers had to do it's an eight and eight and nine man line on Blair Thomas unless they complete some passes he will not run the ball tonight. Seaman and Kirk. Panthers go with a double tight end. Spread out for Dickerson. Out of bounds at the 12. Trey Bauer, the leading tackler. Inside linebacker, the senior, 6'1, 215, with great speed. Number 77 on the offensive line for Pittsburgh has had a bad ankle all year. We'll show you later. They've got a device on his ankle coming out making a block. Said he's saved his life. Mark Stepnowski is an All-American candidate, but he's really been hampered by a bad ankle. And they've got a device that they made in West Germany. We'll show you. It's allowed him to play, and he's played well. Reggie Williams comes to the near side. Osborne and Stewart at the top of your screen. Dickerson needs 10. The draw to Hayward. Ironhead hammers to the 17, and that's all in the grasp of Pete Kirkendall and Pete Kipkopoulos. Two veteran seniors for Joe Paterno. Defense and the kicking game. Penn State. The defense doing their job. And now the question whether their offense is faltering or not, and it is in the first quarter, or it had in the first quarter, whether their kicking game can pick up the slack and get them some field position. Rasp about four yards under his average. His longest punt, 60 yards of the season. To Timpson or Coates? It's Coates at the 43. Dangerous grab. Barrels up to midfield for a return of seven yards after a punt of 39. So Penn State trails 3 0. They start from midfield.
ESPN's presentation of CFA football is being brought to you by Dailies. Look for your favorite Dailies product in your nearest grocery store. There's a daily street for everyone. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Sean Borowski checks in now. He's the sophomore out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, number 34. He's the fullback. The tailback, number 32, Blair Thomas, and the quarterback, Matt Kisner. Motion across by Timpson. Blair Thomas dances out of one tackle, picks up six all on his own. Zeke Gadsden bumped him out of bounds, the senior from Frogmore, South Carolina. We talked about him at the top of the telecast. They tried him as a wishbone fullback at spring practice. Really, Kevin, you go back to the very first game we did, Pitt at BYU. His season was made right there. He started gaining confidence. He started believing in himself. Well, that's 90 percent of it in any sport, I believe. That 81 solo tackles leads everyone else by almost double. On this game. Second and short. Thomas explodes around that left side. Blocking by Mark Sickler, the senior out of Moscow, Pennsylvania, and Roger Duffy, the sophomore center out of Canton, Ohio. First down for Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions. Spindler on the stop. State beginning to establish the running game. Now two runs for a first down. I believe that's the first time they've done it all night here. And we're well into the second quarter. DJ Dozier ballet like moves. Well, it's the type of guy, Jimmy, he's the type of guy that keeps his balance and keeps his shoulders square. Any eye back has to do that. The reason for that is because they want to cut back. See how see how he plants that foot, and keeps the shoulders pretty much square. He's always turning them back square. He's an excellent player and a good runner, but he's got to get the blocking. And if they have a nine-man lineup there, it's going to be difficult. Thomas, nine carries, 26 yards. Second and seven, Pumford and Morosco, the double tight ends. In now for Penn State. Timpson flanked that to the left. Kisner pulls it down. It's batted down at the 31-yard line. Tried a little safety valve pass, took a little bit too much off, and Jerry Wall batted it down. What a job by Jerry Wall. Now Jerry Wall was stringing this thing out all the way, had his hands on the offensive blocker, and put, took his right hand off of the blocker, stuck it up in time to knock the ball down. That's great awareness in coaching. Guy knowing exactly where he is on the field and able to see the quarterback while he's working on the block. They call Wall Steady Eddie. Compares him to the Steelers ex-linebacker Jack Lambert. Quietly excellent. Coach and Timpson are the wideouts. Coach to the near side. Timpson to the far side. Green and Thomas in the backfield. Penalty flags are down. Might have been too much time. Well, it was either that or it was encroachment on the on the Pittsburgh defense. They brought everybody. They had a nine-man line up there again. Kisner didn't know what he was looking at. He might have spooked the lineman. Or it might have been encroachment. There is no play. up into the neutral zone. Yeah, and they had a lineman move while they were in the neutral zone. I guess that's why they're calling it no penalty. Well, it seems to me if there's no contact, it should be a penalty. Well, if Sickler moved, that's a procedure penalty against Penn State. Third and seven from the 34. Same play. Incomplete. And the veteran Blair Thomas just felt the heat. He heard the footsteps. He didn't even try for the ball. Pressure by 26. The senior Zeke Gadsden again. And this is what Gadsden does so well. He gets his hands immediately on the blocker, keeps him off of him, and he's able to play off, keep contain on Kisner. He knows he's coming. Little love tap and makes him throw the ball away. Good pressure defense by Pittsburgh. Last year they felt they may have been a little passive on defense, and they need to be more aggressive this year, and they certainly have been. Billy Osborne, one of the sure-handed Pitt Panthers, a wide receiver, 
I think this might be a fake punt. They'll try to set a field position. Klaus hangs it high. Osborne lets it go, and it's fair caught at the four. Special team. Brennan Gertner, a 32-yard punt. Panthers ball leading 3-0 when we come right back. President's box, former athletic director at Virginia and Cornell, Mr. Dick Schultz, who's now the executive director of the NCAA, sitting with Dr. Wesley W. Posvar, who is in his 21st year, president at Pitt University. The university celebrated their bicentennial this year, 200 years of academic excellence. They welcome film star Gene Kelly, who was a 33 graduate of Pitt, and they honored a $225 million capital improvement program here on campus. Panthers lead, free zip from his end zone. The freshman Dickerson, penalty flag is down. Dickerson dances to the five, going east-west, and now goes up to the seven-yard line. Flag was thrown in the end zone. Chismar on the stop of Darnell Dickerson. Holding against Pittsburgh. Have you see Pittsburgh? If you saw Pittsburgh's team about three or four weeks ago before Dickerson, they would never attempt that. And he gives them that option. They can do so many more things with him. He's so mobile. They're not really worried about him being trapped in the end zone, I guess, especially if they're going to hold. But he can throw the sideline route up the field. He's got that great gun, and he can run. So they will do different things. It's more Mike Gottfried's style, throwing from the end zone, throwing all over the field. Mike, one of the great offensive minds, but he's doing it this year with defense. Experimented on offense, tried the wishbone earlier. There is Terrell Austin, separated shoulder. He's obviously out for the night. Henry Tootin. Number 81 checks into the lineup at wide receiver. And Hosea Hurd, 85, also checks in. First and 12 after that holding call. Hurd and Osborne slotted wide right, two at the bottom of your screen. And things getting a little sloppy. A little timing problem now for the Panthers. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the off. Half the distance of the goal line, first down. Kevin, if Pittsburgh keeps going this way, they'll be at our hotel. <laughs> it all starts at 11.30 Eastern time. College football game day. Tim Brando, Bino Cook, Kerry Ross, and then next Saturday, oh, a good one. The Clemson Tigers, ranked number nine. The Gamecocks of South Carolina, ranked number 14. That's where Kevin and I will be, and that stadium will rock. There'll be some noise there. State shifting defensively to almost a prevent. Hayward hammers up the middle and Ironhead rambles for big yardage up near the 13 in the grasp of Willie Thomas. Now you're Willie Thomas, Kevin. You're 5'9, 175 pounds, and here comes this locomotive at you. Well, you're real nervous, Jim. When that happens, it shouldn't really happen on the goal line. Penn State got him back where they want him. Here's Giftopoulos, the linebacker, maybe overrun a little thing. It's pinned off on the outside by Prentice Wright. And number 34, loose in the secondary, exactly where you don't want him. You don't want him coming at you. No. <laughs> Pittsburgh needs one. Ironhead will get it. Gang tackled near the 18. Pete Giftopoulos, the first to get there. Senior out of Hamilton, Ontario. He was born in Canada and a late penalty flag down. Mistakes, exactly what Joe Paterno does not like from his team. Let him out of the shadow of their end zone, and they're out now. Now, here's Stepnowski, number 77, playing with that device I talked about, making the trap in Hayward. Big hole there. You got to close quicker. Take a look at this device. In West Germany, it was invented. Now, it goes all up around the foot and the ankle. You can see here's the side. It's got a hinge on it. It allows your foot to move up and down, but not side to side. And that was the problem with Stepnowski. A great player, but you can't play unless your ankle is stable. It's stable now. And to wear that thing, he has to use four rolls of tape. Dicker 
Anderson. Throws it incomplete and a late flag. Well, I, I think that flag should be intentionally grounding and, and not roughing. There was no one he could possibly have been throwing that ball to. Craig Hayward made a big mistake. He had a chance at Karpinski at the corner, and he kept going. He didn't run a pass pattern, didn't actually do anything. And uh, Karpinski went right by him, made the play. Karpinski, 84, putting pressure on Dickerson. Now, let's see if Darnell has anybody. Uh, there was nobody out there. Nobody. Well, Bauer. Ray Bauer got it. That's loss of down, too. That's a big penalty. Good play. Another big play by Karpinski. You have to seal the corner. Now, if Hayward's going to go out and run a pattern, it's one thing, but he's got to check for that backer and seal the corner for Dickerson. Osborne brings in the play. What you're seeing is a great defensive game on both sides of the ball. This could be expected. I, I wouldn't expect this. These are excellent defensive teams. Williams wide left. Stewart and Osborne wide at the top of your screen. Penn State showing blitz. Dickerson gives the ball off to Ironhead. Hammers up across the 20 to the 21. Karpinski's got him there. Keith Park Karpinski hurt earlier in the year. We saw him against Boston College. He had such a big game. Again, recognition. He starts outside. He reads it back inside. Gets in on the play. Senior, they've got four senior linebackers in there, and that will help you defensively. And they're all good ones. Karpinski had a great fiesta bowl last year, putting all kinds of pressure on Vinny Testaverde. Out of Warren De La Salle High School, he played linebacker and tight end. They need 23. A little hitch delay to Prentice Wright. And protecting that 3 0 lead after penalties and mistakes, the Panthers will give up the football. Looks like Eric Dickerson with those goggles, doesn't he? That's interesting that Mike Gottfried has opened up the offense, but the results so far have been basically the same. Playing against one of the better defenses in the nation, he's not been able to get a touchdown. Johnny Rask will punt, missed most of the spring practice with a bad ankle. Also plays basketball for the Panthers. Timpson and Coates are back deep. Coates at the 40. So again, the Penn State Nittany Lions with good field position, 60 yards away from six, and they trail by three. Timmy, they were like a 37-point favorite in that game. So the Hurricanes having some problems. You can explain the ball picture, Tim, at halftime. <laughs> First and ten from the 40. Penn State trails. They'll be going to a bowl. Step for one second down and nine gets on the tackle Joe Paterno on the sideline we talked about it at the very top of the telecast Kevin he builds with the defense he takes the best athletes available starts from there then works on the kicking game and the leftovers go to offense sort that's not well you would think that's kind of extreme if you'd never heard that before but that's a lot of coaches feel that way I played for some coaches that felt that way they believe that if you can keep the other team from scoring the worst you can do is a tie, and that doesn't mean to say if they have a great quarterback like Kisner you see there or a tailback like Blair Thomas, they're going to move him to defense. Uh, it's worked for Joe Paterno over the years, but you better know your defense. You better know how to coach defense, and you better be able to stop teams or else you're going to be in trouble. And, of course, Paterno has been able to do it. He won't take chances on offense either as you look as a pit player down on the field. Carnell Smith, the sophomore out of Toledo, most improved defensive player for Pittsburgh back in the spring is down so they are tending to him and the clock is stopped with 9 11 left to go in the first half Pittsburgh leading three to nothing. Well a lot of folks call it the game of the decade you can't argue boy if you saw the highlights and the tapes Oklahoma against Nebraska and we'll have it for you again here on ESPN you'll see the Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers Oklahoma's great Greg Pruitt Friday night at midnight and then again Saturday morning at 10 o'clock the game of the decade you remember that game. I certainly do. I was three years old when that game was played. I can remember the colors going by on the screen. Boy, all, all those antihistamines have gone to your head. They say this guy's got ice water in his veins. He may get a chance to prove it by the end of this game with a three to nothing lead against Penn State and bowl hopes riding on it. Looking at second down at 8, 8.58 left to go before halftime. Penn State just one play off. Panthers showing a blitz, and here they come. Matt 
reads it. Safety valves it out to Timpson. Timpson explodes for a first down at the 45-yard line of Pitt. Gary Richard on the stop, the senior out of Denver, Colorado. Now, this is an audible. That's why it took so long for this thing to get going. Watch the pick. Bottom of your screen, you're going to see the inside receiver come out off the pick. You see the pick? And then the delivery by Kisner. Now, that's actually, they didn't hit the player, but when they come that close, it's just like basketball. Very tough to cover them. An audible by Kisner, and it worked very well for Penn State. Slot to the left, straight drop, man open over the middle of the tight end, drop at the 17-yard line. Paul Pumphrey had a touchdown. The senior out of Clifton, New Jersey, was wide open. And Pittsburgh's been daring him to throw this thing the whole game. They've got eight and nine-man line. They're playing man-to-man -man on the corners. And that leaves him either on a safety, number 88, left corner of your screen, on a safety or a linebacker. See the corner playing the wide out? You got a linebacker. No chance of covering Pomford. That ball right on the nose. And he drops it. <laughs> ah, what the heck? Right on the money. Right on the money. Right That's not a cliche. We'll give you a cliche. A delay. Blair Thomas dances inside to the 39. Third and five coming up. Troy Washington, the junior out of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, on the stop. 6'2, 190 pounds. It's going to be a long night for Thomas. Now, Pitt, the reason that play almost worked, two plays before to the tight ends, because Pittsburgh has just got eight, nine guys up there, and they're just daring him to throw the ball. And Penn State is going to have to connect on a few. Popper's going to have to catch it. Thomas looked a little tired right there. He was huffing a bit. Third and five for the Nittany Lions. They trail by. Andrews make the blitz. Kisner incomplete at the 10. Missed thrown. Looking for Timpson. On the fly pattern. So the punt team comes out for the Penn State Nittany Lions again. Throwing into double coverage. Quentin Jones and Troy Washington were back there stride for stride. Oh, they're showing him an eight-man line here. You can see up there. And then you've got Quentin Jones man-to-man. -man, but the safety's coming over. That ball overthrown. They're putting a lot of pressure on Kisner to be accurate. And he hasn't been accurate. All right, well, on that play, he certainly hit Pomford. Klaus has been accurate, but this time, well, he gets a good bounce, like a knuckleball. It goes backwards. Looked like Joe Negro with sandpaper. A 35-yard punt down inside the five at the three. Pitch ball when we come back. a run to a true value hard no you can't no you can't no you can't keep an iron man down no you can't 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 keep an iron man down you're the heart you're the heart you're the soul you're the soul you're the backbone of this town cause you can't cause you can't cause you can't no you can't no you can't Buy a full-size Ford pickup, and your Ford dealer will hand you this check for $500. There's more. We'll show you up to $2,138 additional savings if you buy your truck with Ford's preferred equipment package. And there's more. Your local Ford dealer is adding his special sale discounts to these savings. Yes, you can buy America's number one pickup truck for less during Truck Buyer Bonus Days at your local world-class Ford dealer. Recommendation, buy Ford now. There's our time left before halftime. 7.42, a 44-yard field goal by Jeff Van Horn, and that has been all the scoring. Osborne comes wide to the left side. Williams wide to the right. Lavinia's the fullback. The tailback is Ironhead. Tries it around the right side. Stepnowski and Miller on the blocking. And Trey Bauer, number 35, the senior out of Paramus, New Jersey, on the hit. He entered 87 with twice as many tackles as the other Nittany Lions. Very tough to block the inside backers for Penn State, too. They'll stack quite often behind uh, the linemen. And by the time you get to them, they're gone. That's what happened with Bauer there. He read it. He was able to come in and make the tackle. Well, he said it's a great defensive game. Hayward, seven carries for 23 yards. Thomas, 11 carries for 33. From the end zone, Dickerson in be careful range. Dives to the five. Schoenwolf has him there. 
Well, what you see here is Mike Gottfried's willingness to do things to open up the offense, but a good job by Penn State on coverage. Now, Dickerson, as quick as he is on the outside, he drops back, recognizes immediately that there's nothing there, and gets himself out of the end zone. Good heady play for a freshman. Joan Wolf on the stop, moved back to defensive tackle after spending the spring trying out an offensive guard. Dickerson needs 11 from the end zone again. Sideline, got his man at the 15. Loose football. Penn State's got it. Reggie Williams fumbled the football, and the Nittany Lions had their deepest penetration. Kicking game put him in good position. The defense takes the ball away. It's amazing how they do this. Dickerson, good read. It's Reggie right in the chest. Now he's got the first down. There's the hand right on the ball. And the rest of the Nittany Lion defense give Topolis, who always seems to be around the ball. I don't know if he recovered it, but he was right there. Defense and the kicking game. He told us last night, and he's done nothing offensively. But here they are in position again. Willie Thomas, the man that forced the fumble, the freshman, they've been picking on him. He atoned. First and 10, Penn State from the 15 and 5. Blair Thomas explodes for six. Second and four coming up. Bert Grossman on the stop. The junior out of Ballack Kinwood, Pennsylvania, helped out by Jerry Wall. It's a natural lift for an offense when their defense turns the ball over to them, and a natural down for a defense that's sitting on a sideline, not expecting to go in. Great teams overcome that. They've got to get on the field and get themselves ready to protect their goal line. Pitt need to do that right now. Thomas now 12 carries, 39 yards. Clayton in. Straight ahead. Close to first down yardage. If he got inside the five, it's first and goal. Nothing it's fancy. It's first and goal. Nothing fancy. A legitimate nine-man line there. Osofsky, the small middle linebacker, 55 in the blue jersey. They're going to come out and get him. He's been able to get away. But see, now he's got to come straight at the ball carrier because he's protecting his goal line. His shiftiness doesn't help me. See what happens to him? He had to go right at Blair Thomas, and the blockers were able to get to him, and they buried him. That's the difference in goal line defense. Nothing fancy here. Borowski, Gash, and Thomas double tight end. Huffman and Borosko. Motion by Gash, and now by Blair Thomas. Stop at the four. Quentin Jones, the senior out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Nice job. Small middle linebackers, they like to run. Now, see, he knows it's wide. They don't go straight at him, and he's able to get outside and now come up and make the great hit and drop him for little or no gain. He's a running guy. They have to protect Osofsky. He's not a guy who can take on blockers and play straight ahead defense. You saw two great examples of it there in the last two plays. The defensive linemen are down there covering all the offensive linemen. Here's Osofsky. See, there's nobody on him. Somebody trying to pull Osofsky just comes right up and meets the ball carrier head on. He's protected. He's stacking. He's behind that defense. There's nobody can get to him, and he makes the play. It makes him so valuable. He recognizes things so well. Power won't do it on this play. They're going to have to try something wide or tricky. Thomas out of the end zone looking for Borowski one of only five freshmen to work his way onto the depth chart last year well, that was wide and tricky well there was no way they were going to go up the middle on pit even though they had a full house backfield so they give it to Blair Thomas pass run option and the thing is no good from the start over the end line. Great defensive stand by the Pitt Panthers. And pressure by Gary Richard, the senior out of Denver, on Blair Thomas to force that throw out of the end zone. Out of the hole of Lance Lonergan. It is blocked. Tarasi had that field goal try blocked from the 14.
side, flattened it out, gets his hand down. Watch the snap. He never really did get that ball down. That thing was late and offline to begin with. Great play by Pitt defensively. First down, range on the stop. As 260 pounds rambled for 14 big ones. Well, just as we said earlier, when you get a turnover, a big defensive play, emotions play a big part. Now this guy, you said 260, Jim. They say 275. And Iron Head, Iron Thighs is in the back. He's in the backfield and he's pumping people. Last year he had a big first half and he tired in the second half. But they haven't used Iron Head so much here in the first half. I think it's eight carries so far. So they're saving him for the second half. Eight carries, 37 yards. Darnell, sideline. The receiver Osborne turned it up. And Darnell read it wrong on a comeback route. Incomplete brings up second down and ten. Dickerson looking upset, and he should be. His receiver either went the wrong way or he threw the wrong pattern. But in the spring game, Mike Godfrey told us that he knew he had something special when he put Dickerson in the in the spring game. He ran six plays and made six mistakes. Either threw to the wrong receiver, went the wrong way, called the wrong play, and they were in the end zone in six plays anyway. He knew he had an athlete, and he's got him out here tonight. They compared Darnell's arm to that of Dan Marino. Quick snap. Quick feet. Unloads it high, incomplete at the 20, and it's just as well. Stewart would have lost three yards. Karpinski on the coverage. Well, that was an interesting play. Stewart did the right thing coming back to help his quarterback, but you can only come back so far. He came back the other side of the line of scrimmage. And had they, as you said, Jim, had they completed that thing, it would have been for a three-yard loss. Darnell looks just a little confused. Well, I think that the crowd is screaming. This has been kind of a crazy game. It's Penn State, and I think he's getting a little rattled out there. He's, he's kind of jumping around on both feet. Panthers have missed on their last six tries on third down. Incomplete. Quintus McDonald, I think, got a hand on the football. And Darnell, you can see the frustration etched on his face. Just a freshman. He has only nine quarters of varsity action at Pitt. I'd be alarmed if I saw that look if I was Mike Gottfried. He's starting to think about it. Now this ball is hit. The arm is hit. Coming around the side. As I said, Dickerson, if he came to the bench with that look on his face, I'd have to talk to him and consider taking him out. He's starting to get down on himself. Penn State will get a roughing the kicker. It bounces dead at the 30, but a roughing the kicker call as Rask was on his backside. I do not know how Rask gets this ball off. Now they've got this thing blocked, and if they touch it at all, that's a great job by Rask. If they touch it at all, it's not roughing the kicker. Sure. It looked like they were all over that thing, Jim, and he just managed to get it under the arm. Schoenwolf, the junior out of Philadelphia, 6'4", 259, got rasped. So it's a first down for Pittsburgh. Joe Paterno does not like the call. He said, wait a minute, we got part of the ball. They did not get part of the ball. The first replay showed that it got off cleanly. But Joe's going to argue he got part of the ball. And who can blame him? I go back to the Boston College game when they had the roughing the kicker penalty on Boston College. Penn State kicked the field goal, went on to win the game. Big penalty. Roughing the kicker, always a big penalty. Who's going to argue with a man who's won two national championships? Kind of like arguing with Don Shula. From the 37, a first down for Pitt. Right and Hayward in the backfield. Ironhead. Oh, he just pushed his own blocker out of the way. While we reset the down and distance, let's check in with Tim Brando. What's going on with Mississippi State and LSU? Timmy? All right, right now, the LSU Tigers are in a bit of trouble down in the bayou. Freshman quarterback Eric Underwood to the sophomore tight end Jesse Anderson, and Mississippi State has tied it. Remember, should LSU lose, then Alabama would play Auburn on November 27th for the right to go to the Sugar Bowl. Timmy, I'll make you a little bet. If LSU doesn't go to the Sugar Bowl, they'll go to Orlando, Florida, 
and they'll meet Penn State. In From the Penn State sideline, the Nittany Lions got down inside the five. They had it first and goal from the four. Then a blocked field goal try for the equalizer. And after a roughing the kicker call, Pittsburgh gets the ball back from their own 42. Second and five. Dickerson pulls it down, can run. First down inside Penn State territory, out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Chased out by Keith Karpinski. Ricketts with a big block, the junior out of Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Now Ricketts is a guy who's really had to change his blocking style. They all have because Janela wasn't all that mobile. Now here he comes out on Karpinski. Number 71 Ricketts doing a good job on Karpinski. As you see in number 15 Dickerson getting up inside. Now last week Dickerson was running back and forth across the field. And the guys were getting exhausted. This guy in particular trying to block for him. Over the middle is wide open. Oh, what a collision at the 28. Reggie Williams and range and Reggie bounces up like a pinball you talk about inner toughness you know that hurt you, you just don't see. want to let Penn State know how much it hurt. And watch the bottom of your screen you can see this coming all the way they let him go inside they play him outside in the balls right there and so is range now I'll tell you what range could have done a lot more damage than that it was almost as if he couldn't get out of the way he was there if he'd have lowered his shoulder it would have been it would have been worse luckily for Williams and you're right Williams jump right up and that's what a receiver has to do whether he hurts or not take it to the sideline don't let him know you got it and he hurt you Dickerson one out of six this quarter for just 10 yards needs 10 here on second down open over the middle misfires too high looking for Henry Tootin Tootin is a six footer could have been Will Chamberlain and that one would have been too high you know they may be asking Dickerson to be do, to do more now than he's capable of doing Look at his face. I, mean, I don't think he really understands what he's looking at back there. That was not a good pass. A floater over the middle into a deep zone. If that ball hadn't been way overthrown, it would have certainly been intercepted. You got to keep him within his abilities if they're going to be successful. Six out of 15. Dickerson is 59 yards so far in the night. Third and 10. Penn State drives everybody back. Deflected and complete almost intercepted by range at the 34 yard line now Dickerson was actually going for Reggie Williams deep on a curl in and one of the Panthers got into the pattern and batted the ball up thinking it's for him now, this is a rifle Jim a rifle and a, very, and a high rifle which is not good see that's another thing if you're going to throw the ball hard as a quarterback you've got to throw it within the body of the receiver so he can catch it or knock it down off the side of his kick off the side of his foot, Johnny Rasp out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Two and a half left to go, a 24 yard kick. Number 26, Zeke Gadsden, eligible for the Butkus Award, along with Paul McGowan, Romanowski, Jones, Norton, Waiters, and Spielman. Who do you think is his toughest competition? Well, I would think Kenny Norton and Spielman would be the toughest because of the publicity factor. Gadsden was a right in this year, he's the first player since they began the Butkus Awards a couple of years ago ever to be written in he was not initially at the start of the season a candidate but he has played so well and as you see tonight what a big factor he is that he is now he's not only a candidate a leading contender first and ten Penn State two and a half to go before halftime 76 yards away from a touchdown Blair Thomas inside blocking by Kuzi Duffy Wisniewski up front and Jerry Wall and yet another stop I honestly believe and I'd be willing to say if Penn State does not get touchdown get points from their defense they will not win this game. They have not taken advantage of Pittsburgh's ability to stop the run the nine man line the eight man line and the only thing they can do against it is throw the ball and their passing game has not been that strong. They will not win this game if they don't get something out of their defense in terms of points. Played at the 35 yard line looking for Alexander. Quentin Jones, the senior out of Pompano Beach, Florida, back there in the coverage. You can't play the corner any better than that. Yeah, their receivers do not match up well. There is this Quentin Jones. Their receivers are not beating the corners man to man. And because of that, Pittsburgh is just not going to get out of their eight man, nine man line. 
Kisner now is also like Darnell Dickerson, one out of six passing. Just 13 yards this quarter. A great defensive effort by Pitt and by Penn State. Motion by Michael Timpson. Delay, Blair Thomas. Up to the 34-yard line. That's close to first down yardage. Zeke Gadsden, the write-in candidate for the Butkus Award, on the stop. Gadsden, 107 tackles, one interception. Five fumbles caused and two fumbles recovered coming into this game. Hurry up offense now for Penn State. 140 and counting. Kisner on first down. Pump fake. Fires to the sideline. Incomplete. Looking for Timpson. It's a great job by Richard on the corner again. Throwing a floater out there. Threw it out of bounds. There's just no way that they're able to get free. The play before that was an interesting play with the motion man when they sent the motion guy the other way and they tried to trap back on a counter with Blair Thomas there was no secondary people on that side if he had broken that play he could have run for a lot of yardage I think we'll see that again Alexander and Timpson slotted out top of your screen backs are Barofsky and Thomas Borowski hammers behind Clayton and Wisniewski. Spindler and Osaski on the stop. They say of Jerry Osaski, 212, maybe 200. He doesn't impress you when he walks into a room. But he's a hitter with good instincts. Hurry up offense again. Kisner on third and eight. Looks down the middle. Nobody's there. Up to the 46, and that should be another Penn State first down. Osaski on yet another stop. Situation for Oklahoma State is also very good. They beat Kansas 49 to 17. Pat Jones's club is going to a very good bowl. Thurman Thomas had a big game. Tennessee over Mississippi 55 to 13. You know, as I look at this entire situation where bowls are concerned, nothing new has de developed really that we haven't already talked about or didn't talk about yesterday. But why not wait until the invitations are sent out on the, the 28th of November? It would make things so much easier for everyone. Well, we know that the biggest group campaigning against a playoff is the bowl group. They don't want a playoff, and in many ways, I don't blame them. One reason they pick the teams early like this is to get the tickets out to everybody. That's the reason you have two weeks between the championship game and the NFL and the Super Bowl. Get the tickets out. However, it's, an, it's very imperative if you can have a national championship game on January 1st, you should have yeah. it on January 1st, and the Bulls should push it back yeah. or then let's have a playoff. Yeah. yeah. One or the other. One or the other. One push the it other. back or a playoff. Yeah. And, th and that's the reason why we have a major problem with the mass appeal for college football not being where it should be. People are talking about television ratings all over the place. The mass public really believes that college football lets them down because it's the only major sport that doesn't give them a true champion. Remember, it's a mythical national title. That matters to a lot of people. But not last year. And not last year, yeah. but most One of the against time. Two. That's right. The Met halftime scoreboard continues in a moment with Tom. Rasp standing back at his own 42. Coach 49 right on your screen. And this kick is a high, high spiral. Doesn't turn over. Coach slides for it at the 12. And is upended there and a late penalty flag. Eric Holsworth called for the personal foul. Now, did you see Coach put up the hand for the fair catch? Yes, I did. Obviously, Holsworth did not, and Coach is down at the 10. What happened here is he put it up early and then started to run. The ball died, and he started to run. Foul on the kicking team. It will be first down. What you'll see, you'll see him put his hand up and then have to chase the ball. Now there's your fair catch signal, but the ball was drifting in the wind, and as he chased it, he came so far from the point where the fair catch signal was made that that was the result. That's a tough penalty. Eric Holsworth. So the ball moves all the way up to the 27 yard line and there is coach down at the 10 12 26 left to go in the third quarter. You felt like that a few times. 
some of them after a football game. I played on a lot of kickoff teams and punt teams, and, and that's a really a tough thing to have to come down like Holsworth did and cover a punt, especially when he moves so far. There's a lot of indecision on the defensive or the punt covering guy whether or not he can hit him. Alexander wide left, Timpson to the near side. Blair Thomas, 17 carries, 54 yards in the first half. He's the tailback, he's got the ball. All of that on his own. There was no hole. He created one up to the 34. Osaski submarined him there. If you're small, you better be quick. Jerry Osaski, number 55, is small. But on this play, not real quick. He's got to get down. Freeman gets under into his legs, able to cut off the backside pursuit against the back like Blair Thomas. That's very dangerous. If he cuts back and you're on the ground, he's gone. Kisner in the first half, only 4 of 13 passing, 44 yards. Kurt Warner, DJ Dozier personified, dances up to the 39. Billy Owens and Jerry Wall have him there. Hey, that was a remarkable four-yard run. And he's worked for every yard there. That was remarkable. There was nothing there, and it was just quick feet. Coaches call him a coaching dream. They say Blair is their best blocker, the hardest worker, knows what everybody's job is, came to camp that way. High school coaches told the Penn State coaches he was aware of everybody's responsibility in the field. They didn't believe it. They found out it was true. Blitz. Who else? Elzekiel Gadsden. Coverage has been absolutely fantastic for Pitt. They're allowed. They're going man to man. That frees up Zeke Gadsden. Hands on, just as we showed at halftime, and the great speed, and he does not get faked out. Man-to-man -man coverage has been exceptional for Pittsburgh, and that's really been the key to the game. Alexander trying to get loose, no way. Richard right on him. No place to throw the ball. That's what makes the rush work. Second and 24. his way near the 30 in the grasp of Billy Owens. Billy Owens, the senior out of Syracuse. Back in 84, his turf shoe got caught. A knee injury, he became a scream machine, kind of a manual for surgical repair. They patched him up, but when he got back at the running back spot, he found Craig Hayward, and he found Charles Gadsden and six or seven others. Everybody but Rocky Blyer had taken his running back spot, so they put him over on defense. at the tight end. He wanted the tight end Pumford on a fly. Instead he goes to Blair Thomas. Pumford stride for stride. Pressure by Wall and Osaski. And it's a long incompletion. This is exactly what I said. It's backside man coverage here. The three wides to the left. Osaski trying to pick. See that? Trying to pick up Blair Thomas. And that's the weak side of the offense. And they tried to get him. But the linebackers, both of them doing their job and being right there. Pitt's defensive secondary has been exceptional. Chris is having a career tonight. A seventh punt. This one is a line drive. Hits at the 35. Fielded there by Billy Osborne. Penalty flag is down, and so is Billy at the 30. Looks like flag day. Four of them. It's got to be a face mask. A 38-yard kick, a loss of four on the return. They'll spot the ball at the 29, but that's before the penalty. A conclave, as Lindsay would say. Flipping on the return team during the run back. It will be first down after the half the distance penalty. Ooh. So the Panthers, who started from their own 35 to start the second half, marching backwards, lead by three. Stewart and Osborne wide to the left. Williams, top of your screen. Hayward headed there. Down for Pitt, Bauer on the stop, and a penalty flag. You 
get the feeling he's going to get his hundred tonight, don't you? Well, they're really going to him now, Jim, and I, I think that uh, early in the game they did the right thing. Personal foul, Penn State. They did the right thing by not going to him, and now they're ready to use him, and everybody's getting fired up, even the offensive lineman, number 77, Stepnowski, pulling. This stuff has worked very well tonight. Oh, great block. Gikopoulos getting down. Gikopoulos left his feet. Bad mistake. You see number 34 going right by him. Joe's gone to the foul weather here. He knows enough to know that he's in a he's in a battle here. His offense will not score on any prolonged drive against this pit defense. He's got to get something from his defense. Kirk and Seaman, the double tight ends, in now for Pittsburgh. Motion by Stewart. Motion on the offensive right side. I think Stepnowski pulled the helmet up. Now you may be wondering if Dickerson, being a freshman. As we, as we hear the penalty here. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense, first and 15. You may wonder if he can audible. He's allowed to audible. He is not allowed to change the play, but he can change the direction based on the number of people in certain areas. He reads positioning of people and he changes the direction and he can change from a run to a pass, but he cannot change a play at will. no help crawls to the 37 well Tim Brando how are the Hurricanes doing Jim the Hurricanes just scored Melvin Bratton on a one-yard run less than four minutes remaining in the game Virginia Tech just receiving the kickoff and right now the Hurricanes have a seven-point lead 20 to 13 <laughs> but it's not over yet back to Jim and Kevin and it hasn't been easy so will it be the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl against the Oklahoma Nebraska winner what do you like in that game? We can think about that for a snap. Dickerson on second and 15. How much time do you need? Darnell measures it. Fires over the middle. Caught at midfield. Henry Tootin. Just a great individual effort by Tootin to come back for the ball and by Dickerson. I think the biggest thing about this play is when he stops, Jim. When he just stops. That just shows you how much, how calm this, look how calm he is. And, and the confidence he has in his own ability. When he slows down like that, he's looking. He's not, he's not going out of his mind out there. He's just looking and looking for a receiver. And that just shows you that maybe he can't handle the pressure. Well, when he stopped, and you saw it very well on the replay, you saw Trey Bauer stop, you saw Gikopoulos stop, they stopped with him. Ironhead doesn't stop, he bangs down to the 46, and Bauer's got in there. And part of the Penn State defensive philosophy, as we talked to the coaches last night, the containment, don't give Dickerson the corners, and that's why they're stopping when Dickerson would pull up. Well, they did, you're right, that's a good point, Jim, and they did stop him from getting outside. The problem was they didn't get him down. I guess if Dickerson reminds you of anybody, it's uh, the young man out of University of Las Vegas at Nevada, and that, of course, is Randall Cunningham, now coming into his own as a quarterback for Philadelphia. Cunningham came in a little undisciplined with a great gun. Over the middle on the fly, looking for Williams, incomplete. Wilkerson back there on the cover. Well, that one traveled 55 in the air, and that was all wrist. And he's picking on a good player. Wilkerson is one of the better corners Penn State has ever had. At least he threw it high and outside where he was supposed to. This is not a city that is easy on quarterbacks. <laughs> and they've seen some great ones here, like Danny Marino. And, of course, Terry Bradshaw. Second and ten. Quick count. Dickerson. Design play in the spread out will come back the other way. Ironhead. Inside the 40 to the 37. Scott Gobb stops him there. The junior out of pit. One that got away. A 10-yard pickup. Very well executed play. It's a dash right and a screen, a quick screen back to Hayward. And then this is this is just a nightmare here. 275 pounds, and he can run. Here we go, here we go. Well, you can think 
think about when you see Craig coming at you is like a bobsled out of control. A bobsled. A mail truck. Well, we were talking about a couple of the quarterbacks that have had great careers in the city of Pittsburgh. They've also been booed here in the Steel City. Bradshaw got off to a slower start than expected, came in with a great reputation. They booed Dan Marino. All Bradshaw did was take the Steelers to four Super Bowls. If he doesn't get off to a good start, he'll hear the boos too. Then there was Joe Gillum. Gillum never did quite recover. You know, I'll tell you the funny thing about Dickerson is he has not really played a great game. He showed flashes of what he can do, but the pit offense, obviously, with three points, has not done a great deal. And yet, people are happy, I guess, because it's three to nothing and the defense is playing well. You saw briefly on that shot, Sal Janela, and in the hat, Larry Wonky. Now, Wonky's, there's Wonky. How do you feel if you're Wonky? You're not seeing any action. You back up Janela and Dickerson. I almost think that Sal Janela is a little relieved. A couple of the coaches hinted at that this week. A lot of pressure on Sal. He was like a freshman. He only played a game or two, and I think it was one game last year. He was at a junior college. He really only played one game before his senior year. Lost his eligibility when they used him late in the year. As you see Wilkerson going off. And uh, so really, he, he was in there for his first year. He's a freshman almost, as Dickerson is. Gary Wilkerson going off. The junior out of Sutherland, Virginia. Kevin Woods, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, checks in. Number two. You expect them to test that left cornerback right away? No, I expect them to test off tackle with Greg Hayward right away. He's never been stopped on a third and one this year. Pitt, two out of three on third down conversions here in the second half. Stewart in motion. Ironhead got the first down and maybe the touchdown. Inside the 15. Tripped up at the nine. Otherwise, it was six. Willie Collins, the freshman. 27 more for Ironhead. This reminds me of what John Riggins did in the Super Bowl on that third and short when he stepped outside. Greg Hayward, this thing's designed to go off tackle. They close it inside. A little holding there on the corner. Hayward steps outside. Seaman with the block or the hole. Watch the corner. Watch 86. Yeah, a little bit of holding on that corner, and Hayward knows where to go. He's heading north-south now. A loss of five. Bernier traps Dickerson. Penn State may be the toughest team in the country inside the 20-yard line. They're a pressure defense to begin with, and they're going to pressure you double that when you get close to their goal line. Reggie Williams checks back in carrying the play. Offensive coordinator Mike Dickens. Problem for a young quarterback you have to make decisions instantly on the goal line when you get close and Dickerson may be in trouble here. He's whatever he does he's going to have to do it quick and be right. He's calling timeout. 5-11 left to go in the third quarter. Pitt protecting a 3-0 lead knocking on the door. Pretty impressive company when you add up the Heismans awarded in there. Dorsett, Griffin, Miller, Rogers, Allen, Walker, Rogier. 100 yards every game in a single season. And add to that, number 34, Craig Ironhead Hayward. He had eight carries, 37 yards in the first half. Tack on nine more carries. And about 67 more yards. And he's got one more game to go. Pete Giftopoulos. He never looked. I just told you about it. He has to make decisions quickly. He never looked. And Penn State will always be in the right place defensively. It's up to you to beat him. And Pete was. Remember the Fiesta Bowl? He intercepted that Benny Testaverde pass to preserve that 14-10 win in the national championship. Giftopoulos playing with a broken hand or he'd have had that ball. He has a cast on his hand. Dickerson's going to have to be better than that. Third and 14. Short to the 12. He's got Michael Stewart from the same part of the country as head coach Mike Gottfried near Norwalk, Ohio. Chismar on the stop. 
Yeah, and that's a, that, that, that play serves no purpose. For him to throw that ball, best to, better for him to run to the middle of the field and fall down. He's created a tough angle for his field goal kicker, thrown a short pass that, if completed, and it was completed, is not even close to a first down. That's an experience. He'll get over that. But it got Van Horn away from that left hash mark, where he's a little bit snake bit. Van Horn from 44, the only scoring in the game. Four and a half left to go in the third. He missed from 24. This, a 28 yarder, is up and no good. Four 19 left to go. Mike Gottfried's Panthers still by three. Chip Bukowskis will snap. Billy Osborne will put it down, and Jeff Van Horn will try from 29. Everything is perfect except the kick. And the young man who started kicking in the seventh grade with his mom as a holder, his dad as the coach, and his brother shagging him, misses his second on the night. He hit from 44, and that's their only scoring. So it's Penn State's ball. They dodge a bullet again. 419 left in the third quarter. side by Mark Sickler and Rich Cousy picks up three tough yards second down and seven is James Turner the senior out of Las Vegas made the hit you talk about a riverboat gambler Joe Paterno he's just sitting on this three-point deficit he's three behind and he's gonna run Blair Thomas until he pops one The Penn State offense is not a complicated offense. They run several running plays, maybe eight, nine plays, maybe a dozen passing plays, but they run the plays that they run best to perfection. They just wear you down. Again, they try that left side with Sickler and Kuzi, and Spindler, the freshman, is there. Greg Hayward, 18 carries, 102 rushes again. And Blair Thomas approaching the century mark. That's 77 tough yards, I'll tell you tonight. They thought they could run at Zeke Gadsden tonight. They really did. And Zeke's got a lot of friends up there on the line to help him out. Third and three. <laughs> because Timpson turned it outside, never went upfield, and Gadsden was putting pressure on Kisner. He couldn't see where the receiver was. Another great defensive stand by the Pitt Panthers. This may be the most underrated 6-3 and three team and misunderstood team in the country. Well, defense has never been misunderstood. Their defense is excellent, and they're number four rated in the country in pass defense. Nothing wrong with that. Klaus again. Slithers this one off the side of his foot. Osborne will gather it in at the 29. Look out, Billy Osborne. Uh, he bounced off one more tackle. He was gone. At the 43, the Panthers lead 3-0. Two and a half left to go. Third quarter. Three, Penn State nothing. Just over two and a half left in the third quarter and all of the fourth quarter in this great rivalry. Dickerson bends in with White the fullback and Iron Head the tailback. On first down, the freshman is down at the 33. Chismar, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, has him there. Well, did the Hurricanes score again, or Virginia Tech? Did they tie things up, Timmy? All right, Jim. Virginia Tech had a last gasp with under two minutes left. They had the ball at their own 26. Pass was. Uh, they, they couldn't move on fourth down. Miami got the ball deep in their own territory, and then Walsh to Alfredo Roberts made it 27-13. to 13. Miami, we can tell you now, that game is a final, and the Hurricanes are safe, tucked away in the orange. Back to Kevin and Jim. So the Hurricanes of Jimmy Johnson will perhaps see orange against that Nebraska-Oklahoma winner. That's Osborne. Motion the other way. That's Ironhead, stopped at the 37 by Schoenwolf. All right, I asked you before, who do you like in that Oklahoma-Nebraska game? We've seen both teams. Who do I like or who do I think will win? Who we do have you to think be careful will... here? Well, I know you like both. Yeah, they're just both of those programs are outstanding, but I think my feeling is that the Oklahoma wishbone will be too much for the Nebraska defense. High-scoring game, but I think that Oklahoma will win that game. 
Well, we'll take a look at one of the great games of all time, the game of the decade, the Sooners and the Corn Huskers. Highlights, interviews, all coming up Friday night at midnight, and again Saturday morning at 10. Dickerson needs 15 on third down. Safety valves it out to Ironhead, who's pounded at the 37-yard line. Pitt fans and Coach Mike Gottfried wanted a personal foul. Gob on the stop, the junior out of Pitt. Take a lot to punish that man, 275 pounds. First play of that drive killed it when they went for the pass, and Penn State was in a blitz situation. We're able to throw him for a loss. Jim Coates, Brask. Oh, beautiful, beautiful spiral. Backs Coates up to the 12. Nowhere to go. He's down at the 13. A 51 yard punt, a one yard return by Coach Lavinia on the tackle. Well, we heard from Todd Santos at halftime with Tim Brando. You'll see him in action. A chance to look at the NCAA all time leading passer. Coming up next, San Diego State and Colorado State. The Aztecs get off the bus, as Hank Stram likes to say, throwing the football. The Rams and the Aztecs, Papa and Logan, are standing by. That'll be next. From the 13. Motion by Timson. Here, Thomas at the third. What are you playing? Charades? Go ahead. You can talk. I didn't want to If jump you see in. something, go ahead. I saw that earlier. That was that trap off the motion. They tipped it last time when they run the motion. Watch the motion guy. I know they're trapping back this way. I know I'm waving my arms in front of you. That's I the, thought you were Bert Convy on the new game show. That's that old linebacker in me. They ran, out, they ran out one other time. And when they run the motion guy to the other side, they're trying to break that guy loose because the motion goes with him. The defense takes it to the other side of the field. There's no backup people if they break the trap. Yeah, I started to lose my mind. Then. I want to go out and make the tackle. Hollywood squares. Kevin Conley to block. Second and five. Right up the middle. Baroski, super sophomore out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Stopped by the great freshman, Spindler. I'll tell you another play I'd be looking for. The drop pass by Pomfret, the tight end. If they replace him, I think that they'll probably run that same action and try and get loose. Probably, and I'm sure Joe Paterno saving that play for the fourth quarter because seven points will win this game. Pomfret dropped it. He'll probably put in a receiver who can catch a little better and send him up the middle. Well, Pomfrey came into the game 12 catches, 110 yards, a 9.2 average, and one touchdown. Hampered by a full hamstring back in the spring. And a whistle on third and one. Third quarter has expired. Penn State trailing Pitt 3 0. Jeff Van Horn, a 44 yard field goal, and that's been it. Along with Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Pittsburgh. The Panthers leading the Nittany Lions 3 to nothing, with 15 minutes left to go in one of the great rivalries in college football. Wide to the left, Michael Alexander. Michael Timpson in motion. Third and one. Thomas, if he got the first down, it was all by himself. Billy Owens hanging on while they unpile. Storyline, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It started off with Jeff Van Horn's 44-yard field goal. He has missed from 24 and 29. Hayward again over 100 yards rushing for Ironhead. Penn State just 80 yards rushing. And Blair Thomas is the seventh leading rusher in the country. And Gary Richard with a blocked 21-yard field goal that would have tied up the game. So Chris Klaus into punt yet again. This one hangs up high, doesn't turn over. Osborne backs up to the 34 and gets a six yard return. The Panthers will start from 40 yards away. All right, the 21 yard field goal try that Gary Richard blocked, here it is. Fumbled snap to begin with, it was late, maybe the steps a little bit, but Richard coming from the outside, which is where you like to block him from, cut that guy on the corner, come down flat, he made the play, and that's been the big play because that's as close as Penn State could get all night. 14-16 left to go. Gary Richard, the senior out of Denver, Colorado. The ball in the center of the field, just shy of the 40-yard line. Dickerson bends in. Seaman and Kirk, the double tight end. Michael Stewart motions across. Ironhead motions back to the line of scrimmage. It is stopped there by Polamalu. 
and by Chismar. Well, this is where you got a guy like Hayward. He can really help you. They're going to run a trap. Polamalu is able to fill on the inside, laying on the ground, and he makes the tackle anyway. It's a pretty good play. Team defense by Penn State. Now, Hayward is really going to help Pitt now if they want to control the ball. They've got the horse, and he should be pretty well rested. We have not called number 99's number much tonight. Polamalu handled by Ed Miller, the senior out of Kenilworth, New Jersey. Neutralized pretty effectively. Darnell, nobody to throw to. Bumped out of bounds after a short gain of one. Third and nine coming up. Pete Giftopoulos, the senior out of Hamilton, Ontario, chased Darnell Dickerson down. And they've done a great job of containing him on the run. Giftopoulos getting all the way outside. It was a tremendous block by Prentice Wright on Bernier at the corner that let him get outside, but the inside pursuit was there. Joe Paterno says of Giftopoulos that he has great feel for pass defense, great anticipation. And most of those linebackers like Penn State always have. Dickerson on the road to Tootin. Willie Thomas, the freshman, that's been the man they have worked over when they need big yardage. A 21 yard pickup. This is just a tremendous pass. Straight drop back, no pressure. It's a zone defense. Thomas is not that far off of two. Just a, just a perfect pass. Tootin, Proposition 48. Last year, a wide receiver in safety in high school, led the state of New Jersey in interceptions with 12. First and 10 for Pitt. There's the flea flicker, iron head back to Dickerson, but no wide receiver is out there. Reggie Williams will have to go into the chemistry lab to catch that one. He's 10 yards beyond the end zone. A tribute to the Penn State defense, but the reason this doesn't work is because the, the receivers really didn't sell it. They have to make it look like they're going to block, and they don't. You've got pass blocking, so your inside backers, if you're reading a lineman, you read pass, and then, of course, down we go, and this thing, of course, is long gone by the time uh, by the time he catches it. The receiver has to make it look like it was a block. They ran a pattern instead. Darnell said, wait a minute, that's not how it worked in practice. Here comes Hayward. Your perfect collision up here. He met Pete Giftopoulos at the 37-yard line. When they were done, they were both down at the 35. We said that you could hear it. You listen in. scrambling does is wear down his offensive lineman. He'll go east-west a couple times. Did in his very first start. Finally, Rickett said, I was going to tackle him myself. Hey, got, he's also wearing down the defense, too, Jim, on this. Uh, he's been scrambling around a lot tonight. Rasp, he's punted six times tonight, his longest for 51 yards. And Jim Coates is back in, standing at his own 10-yard line. Let's see how Rasp can do off the side of his foot. Nails this one inside the 15. Well, now he keeps moving up to the 20, the 22. So the fans here in Pittsburgh don't like the spot. Penn State just one play away, and they've got a lot of time left to do it. Stan Clayton, the senior out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, checks in at the tackle spot for Penn State. Nittany Lions. They need three for the tie and a touchdown for the win. Kisner, dancing feet, and he just throws this one out of bounds. Pittsburgh fans saying, wait a minute, how about intentional grounding? Well, how are the Tigers of LSU and Mike Archer doing? Let's go back to the studio and check in with Tim. 
All right, Jim, late in the third quarter, LSU up 24-14. Mississippi State on the one, fourth and goal. Hank Phillips had rushed for over 100 yards, but he's stumped by Ron Sancho, Darren Marlboro, and the rest of the front forward wall. The Tigers clinging to a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. Jimmy, I'm telling you, they're going to the Citrus Bowl. They'll beat Penn State. A little hitch delay to Blair Thomas, who cracks it up near the 25. Osaski has him there. Jerry Osaski, the middle linebacker, has been all over the field tonight for the Pitt Panthers. We've been telling you all night about this defense and why they can't run against it. Take a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players within a yard of the line of scrimmage. They've got more players on defense than on offense on the line, and there's just too many guys to block. And it's been like that all night. Penn State has not been able to pass, so they've not gotten out of it. Big third and seven coming up here from the 24. Alexander to the left, Timpson to the right. Backs Borowski and Thomas are split. Kisner backpedals, looks to the sideline, fires. Is it caught? It is incomplete at the 37. Alexander thought he came up with a catch. Richard was back there on the coverage. He made his cut too close to the sideline. Number nine, too close to the sideline, and then never did catch the ball. Maybe interference there. Looked as if Richard got the arm around the intended receiver long before the ball got there. Osborne is back deep. Klaus approaching double digits in the punting department. Has this one go out of bounds at midfield? Let's take another look and see if Gary Richard did indeed bother the intended receiver, Michael Alexander, right there. The arm's on him. Oh, no, his face is on him, no question. But no flag. The Panthers with a 3 0 lead have the ball and 11 minutes to go. Go over Jeep Cherokee's advantages, and certain things stand out. Cherokee gives you a choice of two or four doors, two shift on the fly four wheel drive systems, and an optional four liter six cylinder engine that's more powerful, far more powerful than anything in its class. But perhaps Cherokee's single biggest advantage is the simple fact that it's a Jeep. You know, there are a lot of places where you can look for an auto part. But here's where you'll find it. Napa has parts for imports and other hard-to-find parts. This series has been sold out in Pittsburgh since 1973 when they started playing for about three years at Three Rivers Stadium, the home of the Steelers. Since then, it's come back here on the Pitt campus. Cannot beg, borrow, or steal a ticket. Another sellout crowd. Dickerson from his just shy of midfield. Hosea Hurd motion. And Ironhead chopped down after a pickup of two, second down and eight. We talked at the top about the rivalry and the cut of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as far as recruiting. Also at stake, national ranking and bowl bid. Certainly for that man, Mike Gottfried. His first goal when he took over at Pitt, a winning program. Then to get to a bowl game. Then to get into the top 20. And then to get into the top 10. All those goals definitely in sight right now. And of course, hanging on here and upsetting Penn State would be a major step. Seaman and Kirk, double tight end, play action fake. Dickerson in trouble, runs away, throws it up, incomplete at the 37 yard line, and it's caught. It is caught at the 32 yard line. Osborne came from nowhere. He wasn't the intended receiver. Dickerson, watch Karpinski chasing Dickerson, who just put the ball up, and Osborne wasn't even the intended receiver coming. Well, Jim, this is an ill-advised pass at best. Dickerson running for his life, throws it into coverage. It's deflected off Seaman. And Osborne catches it. Uh, that, that's a play that they'll laugh about on Monday if they win. If they don't, there'll be some pretty sad faces. He should not have thrown that ball. Seven-yard line, but let's go back to what you you were talking about—the story where Dickerson makes mistakes, but something good happens. <laughs> Godfrey talked about that at practice the other day. If he does four years of that, they're going to be in trouble. 
that particular play. I think I think what they're referring to when they say that is that his athletic ability will get him out of it. That that was a fluke. I'd like to make a point about counters. Their counters are killing Penn State because Penn State's defense is so aggressive. They're catching angles on. Them. 23 carries, 114 yards for Ironhead. Nine and a half left. Hit three. Penn State nothing. And number 34 explodes the other way inside the 20. Upended at the 17 by Trey Bauer. Blocking on that right side by Ed Miller, who's done a terrific job. 61 at center. Stepnowski, 77, and Matus, 62. Watch him. Before his injury, Stepnowski, 77, considered one of the best in the country. Helped with Matus there, number 62. A great job by the offensive line. Stepnowski's had a rough year, but his ankle with that brace on it, he seems to be playing very well. And they're starting to overpower Penn State. Ed Miller just completely neutralizing Polamalu, the nose tackle for Penn State. From the 17, first and 10, Hayward hammers over the left side. Inside the 10, Ricketts, Caliguire, and Miller, range made the stop. The first bad thing that happens to you at the end of a game defensively is you can't finish the tackle. You can get there, you can make the hit, but you just don't have the strength. Again, Stepnowski sealing it off. You see how guys missing? That was Karpinski missing on Hayward. You just can't get that. Your legs are not good enough to stay under you, and you can't make the tackle. And when you're going against a guy 270, that's a big fact. Hayward on a counter, dives down to the seven. Be about a half a yard shy. Kurt Bernier on the stop. And the reason the counters are so tough is because Penn State's defense plays upfield or a penetrating defense. That means they want to go forward first. And when they run counters like that, you go forward and you get blocked from the side. We've had a couple of really good shots of these guys blocking down on people, and it's just murder. If you're playing defense, this is what the counter looks like. Now, Palomalo, he's not seeing anything. And see how they're, see that? See Bernier on the ground, and they're just cutting people off. They did a pretty good job on that, but it creates angles. They say that Ironhead fell forward for the first down after the spot. Panthers got a break there. First and goal from the seventh. Eight, it, excuse me, Jim. Eight, 12 left. There's a gut check here for Penn State's defense now. They'll play gap. And they'll come hard. Almost unbelievable the job the Pitt defense has done in the second half, holding within the Lions for just that one first down. Penn State has to keep the Panthers out of the end zone. Field goal, and Penn State could still win. Ironhead hammered backward for a loss of one second and goal coming up from the eight. Vernier on the stop once again, number 41, the senior out of State College, so they didn't have to go very far to recruit him. He was a walk-on back in 83. MVP of State College High School, wrestled and boxed for the Little Lions there. One of four brothers and three sisters. His dad an architect at State College. Penn State players say they like to play goal line defense because there's no question what they have to do. Again, Dickerson's got to make quick decisions because Penn State's going to be on him in a second. Scrimmage, no gain. Karpinski on a stop. Again, Karpinski had that big fiesta bowl chasing Vinny Testaverde around. This is really where you see the coaching. They have no doubt, Penn State doesn't, about what they're supposed to do. They make instant decisions. They see Dickerson, and they all come to the outside. They're forcing the ball from the inside out and then pursuing it. And Pitt has got to be able to throw the ball on the goal line. They have tried this a number of times tonight, and they have not been able to make it work. Who do you throw to here? You look out for a pick. I would look out for a pick on the wide receivers, try to throw a little slant in. Pick for the outside receiver. Kirk is the tight end. He's the better receiver. Dickerson backpedals, needs nine. Only one receiver in the end zone. Dickerson needs some help. Runs out of room and throws it incomplete. Osborne, the intended receiver, strange play call. There was only one wide out in the end zone. That was Osborne, and he's complaining that he was pass interfered against. Well, they were all lost out there for Pitt. Here's the two receivers, both of them running 
similar patterns. I don't know why. Penn State all over them. And now they have to come back. You waving your arms when you're covered is not the way to do it. See all those Penn State defenders in the end zone and nothing happening. Van Horn has missed from 24. He's missed from 29, but he hit the only points we've got from 44. This is a 26 yard try. Osborne will put it down. It's the hash mark the left side. He doesn't like that hash mark. It's up and it is. No good. Penn State still alive. 6 11 left to go. Nitty Lions ball when we come back. Joe Paterno unbeaten here at Pitt. There's our time left. 6 11. Pittsburgh 3. Penn State nothing. There's Van Horn who's had a nervous kind of a night, but he's put the only three points we've got up on the board. Pitt leads by three. Penn State's ball with their own 20. Motion by Timpson. Blair Thomas, who's got to be getting a little bit tired for a loss of one. Zeke Gadsden. Gadsden and Osaski have simply had marvelous games. Now, earlier we talked about Osaski not being a good 50 linebacker, a 5 0 linebacker. What is it and why not? Well, the reason is because he'd have to play in a normal alignment over an uncovered guard, and he'd have to meet that guard quite often. In a 40 front, he's the middle. He can outrun the center and go sideline to sideline. They can do a lot of stunts to protect him in the 40 defense. Anthony showing blitz. And they're coming. First down. Michael Alexander bumped out at the 33 by Quentin Jones. They've been playing man to man all night and making it work. Watch the top of your screen. Quentin Jones gives them a lot of room there for Alexander. Alexander breaks it off, and what they're going to try and set up probably is an out and up. To try and get the ball upfield. Five and a half left to go. Panther fans. Quick handoff to Borowski, the fullback. Came in with 14 carries, 54 yards, just under a four point average. And a penalty flag yet to be checked out. Borowski's dad, by the way, Stan played in the NFL for the New York Giants, and he also played in the NBA for the Washington Bullets. Is that right? Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense. First and 15. Wrong time for a Penn State penalty. First and 15, five and a half left to go. Penn State shut out Pittsburgh 3 0 way back in 1911. Panthers trying to do the same here. Downfield for Timpson. He's got it at the 20. Michael Timpson with unbelievable speed. They say he's the quickest ever at wide receiver at Penn State. A bad knee in the spring. Nothing bad here except the coverage. They've been doing it all night. Richard's been playing him outside, giving him the inside. He gives it to Timpson here, and he just gets outrun. And a perfect pass right in his hands. Down to the 20. Michael Timpson, world-class speedster, and that was the difference. He caught him out there all alone with Richard and hit him. Joe Paterno says that Timpson has more natural receiving ability than Kenny Jackson. Blair Thomas. Stop after a short pickup of one by Jerry Wall. That's an interesting problem here for Penn State. They have not been able to run the ball with any success in terms of getting first downs. Their passing game has been weak, aside from that big play right there. And now they're in field goal range. What do you do? Second and nine coming up. 440 and counting. Alexander wide to the left. Timpson wide to the right. Backs are evened up. Thomas and Borowski. Corner looks incomplete in the end zone, looking for Michael Alexander. Richard back there on the coverage, the ball just slightly overthrown. That was great coverage by Richard. Get right, right inside on the bottom of the screen. Number nine is Alexander, and Richard, watch Richard get right inside his body there. Leaves him only one option, and that one is to go out of bounds. 
Simmons. Good coverage there. How fast is Timpson? They're talking about him as perhaps an Olympic hopeful. He was the first ever to win four events in a Florida State High School track meet. He won the long jump, the 120, and the 330 hurdles, and the 220 dash. Well, speed won't help him here. He's going to have to run a good pattern. He's wide at the bottom of your screen. Batted down by who else? Number 55, Osafsky. Now the field goal try. The problem here for Penn State is that they're too predictable. If they can't go to the wideouts, there's only one other guy, the leading receiver, Nosowski, quick as a cat and smart, right on top of him. Ray Tarasi, second in the place kicking department, is a freshman. Now he's a sophomore. Between the 30 and the 39, he's been perfect. This a 36-yard try in the center of the field, and you can watch. Gary Richard has blocked his second field goal try of the night. They had to have seen something on the film for him to get two in the same night. There's no excuse for that. The man on the corner has got to take a step and make sure he gets a piece of the outside man. The outside guy, for him to block it, has got to come clean. Let's see if he steps and even tries to get a piece. Top of the screen, he steps in, gets very little piece. And Richard gets a hand on it, just a finger, just enough. Again, sealing off the inside, but not your responsibility is to get a piece of that outside guy. He just didn't do it. And Richard did a great job of flattening out and getting his hand out there. We've got 4.15 left to go. We'll take time out with Pitt protecting a 3-0 lead. Nothing pit over Penn State. ESPN's presentation of CFA football has been brought to you by Kendall Motor Oil. From protection worth its weight in gold. By Napa Auto Parts stores. Call 1-800-LET-NAPA for the nearest location. And by the makers of Campbell's Chunky Soup. It takes care of the meanest appetites. 3-0 Pittsburgh. They have blocked two Penn State field goals. They've missed three field goals of their own. Jeff Van Horn, a 44-yarder, and that's been it. Nickerson will pull it down. He had no intention of passing, and now he'll run the other way. The freshman out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Was it Gary Richard, or was it John Carter, number 89? Watch in the right center, lower right of your screen. Carter, 6'4", very quick for his size, and he gets that right hand on the ball. Now, they say of John Carter, Kevin, that he studies films of all of his individual blockers that he goes up against looking for weakness. He plays all four defensive line positions, and it looked like he was the one that came up with that crucial block. That weakness may have made a difference in this game. On second and two, Ironhead, first down and more. Clock winding down inside of four. Well, how are the Tigers doing against Mississippi State? Tim Brando? Good news and bad news for the Bayou Bengals. Tommy Hudson hurt again, so Mickey Guidry comes in and Wendell Davis with a spectacular catch. That would lead to a Harvey Williams touchdown. They've added a David Brown down field goal. LSU looking good over Mississippi State, but Hudson with a lower left back injury, and obviously that hurts the Tigers. Let's go back to Jim. Tommy Hudson, one of the great passers in the history of the Southeastern Conference. You see our time winding down. Inside 345 when this play will go off. Stewart wide to the right. Lavinia and Hayward in the backfield. One of its iron head. And again, that great job by number 61, the center, Ed Miller. Trey Bauer on the stop. Ed Miller, a knee injury in 84. In fact, a lot of knee injuries has hampered his playing time. Switched from defensive tackle to center because they needed some depth at the center spot. Younger brother Scott enrolled at Pitt this fall. He's going to play on the offensive line out of Kenilworth, New Jersey. Out of Barely High School and head coach Bob Taylor, Ed Miller doing a great job as his iron head. They had 37 yards in the first half. They get the ball the rest of the night. Gob and Hayward meet head on at the 38.
Well, if you're Penn State in that tenacious Nittany Lion defense, you're trying to strip the ball free. Well, he's tough to strip the ball from because he's so big. It's all you can do to tackle a guy, much less position yourself at a point where you can strip the ball. If you go for the ball, he's gone. Because you need all your body in front of him to stop him. 248, both teams with two timeouts, and the man you're looking at on the screen with a record of seven wins, no losses, and one tie here in Pittsburgh since becoming the head coach at Penn State. This is his 38th Pitt Penn State clash as an assistant or as a head coach. And he talked about the emotion and the excitement last night at the hotel. He said it's always something special. You get ready for this game, it's for the bragging rights of Pennsylvania. It's a big game as far as recruiting. Well, when he came up, Jim, they would not, Pitt would not go to State College and play. They had to always, they had to always come here and play the University of Pittsburgh, and I think that kind of irked the people at Penn State. And Joe says he never really forgot that. He likes to, likes to give it to him, hand it to him, but in this game, he's going to need a couple of points here to win it. Greg Papa and Dave Logan will bring you that game. Colorado State and San Diego State. Don't forget, you'll see Todd Santos he is the best passer in the NCAA. Broke that record last year, last week. And you heard from Todd with Tim Brando at halftime earlier tonight. Third and six. A big defensive play right here for the Nittany Lions. Kirkendall on the stop, but it was too late. The right side of that line, Miller and Stefanowski and Matus, double team in middle guard. And here comes the big guy. Run down from behind, and I'll tell you, third down and five or six, be able to get that. That's a pretty good block. Done a well of a job in the second half, that offensive line. How about that? Blair Thomas, the seventh leading rusher in the country, held in check by the Pitt Panthers, Greg Hayward running with wild and reckless abandon in the second half. Again, he only had 37 yards on eight carries in the first half. He hit offensive line, done his job. Ironhead dives to the 50, second and eight, with 214, 213, 212 and counting. You now it'd be tough to pick the player of the game. On offense, no question, Ironhead on defense. You could go to Gadsden, you could go to Osaski. Two corners. 2.12 left to go. Penn State takes time out, so we will too. Pitt leads by three. Over on the Pittsburgh sideline, Mike Godfrey, 11, 8, and 1 in his second year as the head coach here at Pitt. Absorbed a 34 to 14 shellacking at the hands of Penn State last year. Now, 125 seconds away from upsetting Penn State. And for Mike Godfrey to the Panthers, perhaps a better bowl bit. Dickerson dumped at the 45 in the grasp of Brian Chismar. Dickerson doing a little something that he shouldn't be doing against an experienced defense, especially one that has four senior linebackers. Watch him carry the ball out. And he doesn't really tuck it in when he gets hit. Still got it out, still got it out. And if there's a little help coming from behind a little earlier, they can knock that ball loose. You'll hear about that on Monday, too. The last time that the Panthers shut out Penn State, that was back in 55 by that 20 to zip score. And third and 13, they'll keep it on the ground. Iron hit. They'll keep the clock winding down, too. Scott Gobb on the tackle. 123, 122, and Penn State asked for their timeout. That is the last timeout for the Nittany Lions, so they'll get the ball back, and this game is far from over when that man is the head coach. Don't forget, on Sundays, ESPN is your source for pregame analysis and postgame reflection on all the National Football League action at 11.30 Eastern Time. Chris Berman, Pete Axelm, and Tom Jackson on NFL Game Day, a one-hour preview of all the day's games. Then at 7 o'clock, Chris, Pete, and Tom come right back for NFL Primetime. Right before our 8 o'clock kickoff and tomorrow night, the Chargers 7-1 leading the West, playing host to the L.A. Raiders. The Black and Silver come in with Mike Patrick, Roy Firestone, and guest analyst John Matusak. Strategy time for both benches. 
Penn State has got to come after this punt. Their offense, I don't think, is capable of going 80 yards. If they kick it in the end zone, Pitt, they'll have to go 80 yards. So Penn State's got to come after the punt and give themselves a chance at a field goal to tie or a touchdown to win. And what they're talking about on the Pittsburgh sideline is they'll probably go to a tight punt formation. Penn State almost blocked the punt earlier. Yeah, it was Schoenwolf who came crashing in. Actually overran the punt, I think. I believe they'll go to a tight punt formation, protect the punter, and just get the ball out of there. Coates is back deep. And Rask, who chose Pitt over Duke. Big punt coming up here. Snap is a little high, pulls it down. Quick foot bangs the release. Coach fields at the 20 and wants the return to the 25. So the Panthers are 75 yards away from the pit end zone. But they only need to go about 45 or 50 yards to get into field goal range. A 33-yard kick, a six-yard return. And here comes Matt Kisner, senior quarterback out of Youngwood, Pennsylvania. And the crowd rising to it here at Sold Out Pitt Stadium. Matt is six out of 22, 108 yards. He needs a big drop. And here comes Zeke Katz. They've got to send out more than two players here for pass. Timson Wright, Alexander, bobbled the ball at the 37, right in front of Mike Gottfried and the Pitt coaching staff. It's another two-man pattern. Penn State going with another two-man pattern with a minute 10 to go. Look out for the tight end or a wing back up the middle. Again, we remind you what the Penn State coaches told us last night. Their passing game only about 50% efficient of where they would like to be at this point in the year. Incomplete at the 40 and no flag. Richard back defensively. Looked like he might have arrived a second early. Gadsden with pressure. Watch Zeke. Well, here's where Penn State doesn't want to be. Blair Thomas not even a threat to Ezekiel coming in here. And now the pass and whether or not it was interference. Oh, boy, that's close. If it's not, it's the best defensive play I've ever seen. Whoa! Or something like that. Third and ten. The ball game hangs in the balance. Motion by Timpson. Blitz is on. They're all coming. Matt unloads. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down. Penalty flag is down. Quentin Jones is screaming at one of the officials, and it's against Pittsburgh. Mike says everybody stay calm. He wasn't calm after the Navy game. Told his wife Mickey if Navy won that game, he'd just keep walking, walking out the end zone and never stop. Pass interference. On the defense, first down. It's Gary Richard on the motion, man. The ball is in the air. And he's going to hit him. Top middle of your screen. Right there. Ball had already been thrown. It's a good call. Was it a catchable ball? If he hadn't chucked him, <laughs> it might have been. Yeah. <laughs> Ten penalties against Pitt for 96 yards. Their bench trying to get the crowd to come alive. Yeah, I got to believe that Penn State has a play that we haven't seen. We've only seen about eight or nine of them the entire night. I got to believe that they've got something here that they're saving. Well, you certainly would try to get Timpson with his world class speed isolated one on one to the wide side of the field. Well, the pre safety's playing really deep. I think the play would be some kind of fan or swing across the middle with Blair Thomas and get it to him quick. First and 10 from the 39. Field goal can tie. A minute left, but the Nittany Lions are out of timeouts. Hunt fake. Jones stayed at home. This one was never close. Alexander, the intended receiver. I want to go back to what we talked about, the passing game. As you look at that shot of the senior quarterback, Matt Kisner. When we say that the passing game is only at 50% efficiency, it's not all Matt's fault. He's got some inexperienced receivers. Sometimes they'll run the wrong route. Sometimes the timing is not quite right. So a lot of different things can contribute to a passing game not being up to snuff. That's right. And you have to set up the defensive secondary. And I don't think these receivers are sophisticated enough to set up the defense so they can run routes. Matt has gone incomplete on his last five, second and ten. 
Throws underneath. Too high. Incomplete at the 45. And no flies. Jones was back on the coverage. And on his backside is Matt Kisner. Well, they're both going for the ball here. Jones is playing the ball. And this, is, this ball is anybody's ball. And I think that's the call. See them both just going up for it. And I don't think that there's no penalty there at all. Matt Kisner was really hammered. Tom Bill is the backup, the sophomore out of Flemington, New Jersey, who's only thrown 36 passes as they work on the young man out of Youngwood, Pennsylvania. You know who else came out of Youngwood, Pennsylvania? Another great quarterback? Uh, no. Ended his career as a great place kicker. George Bland. That's it. What do I win? You can buy me dinner. <laughs> Of course, Kisner will have to go out of the game now for at least one play. Penn State out of timeouts, 49 seconds left. Meanwhile, over on the sideline, Tom Bill, number 12, the sophomore, is warming up. He is 16 of 36. Or maybe it'll be Darren Roberts out of Somerset, New Jersey. Who will the quarterback be for Joe Paterno? It's Darren Roberts out of Somerset, New Jersey. His older brother played football at West Virginia. So Roberts checks in at quarterback. They compare this guy to Jamel Holloway. He's a scooter. Tough spot to come in. You need 10 on your first snap. Panthers showing blitz. Everybody's up there but the secondary. Roberts. Pulls it down. We'll try to run for five, for six, for seven. Fourth and three coming up. Jerry Wall chased him out of bounds. Penn State has no timeouts. There's no point kicking the ball. They'll have to go for the first down. Now do you bring Kisner back in? Roberts looked pretty good around the corner. Maybe leave Roberts in for one play and pick up the first down. Well, I, uh, my opinion would be to leave him in and run a rollout, but here comes Kisner. He seemed to be have a little more running ability immediately than Kisner. I hope they gave Matt some smelling salts. Good play by the junior there, Darren Roberts. Picked up some. So it is fourth and three. Kisner in trouble, flares it out, and he's got Borowski. Borowski with a first down. Borowski down at the 36-yard line of Pitt. Quentin Jones on the stop. A great call. 16-yard pickup for Penn State. Well, there we were. One we hadn't seen. A little play action to the fullback. Pressure from that side, and he got loose in the secondary. They'll need two more of those to get into field goal range. No timeouts left. 32 ticks left on the clock. Intercepted by the Pitt Panthers, Billy Owens. Billy Owens will score. Return for number one, Billy Owens. But there are penalty flags down on the field. <laughs> Billy Owens, the running back who was injured, came back, found Charles Gadsden. Craig Hayward taking over his running back spot. Shifted over the defense. A 70-yard interception return for an apparent touchdown. But there are flags, and they are against Penn State. The touchdown will stand. Good job, brother! Good job, Out of Christian Brothers Academy, coached by Bob Campbell. Billy Owens steps in front of this cross the field pass. Tim, it's only fitting if the secondary would have an interception and score the icing touchdown. They played so well all night. Owens is an All-American candidate with a rebuilt knee. He was all East last year, one of the great ones in the country, a big part of the fourth rated secondary in the nation. The extra point try to make it a 10-0 game. Flags are down. 
For Billy Owens, he had four interceptions last year. Two of those were returned for touchdowns. And there he is. His first interception. One play for the point. His first interception on the year for Billy Owens. Couldn't have come at a better time. Boy, this game belonged to the defense. We've called Gatson's number 26, Osaski, all night long. And Billy Owens with a career interception, the senior out of Syracuse. Jeff Van Horn, who staked the Pitt Panthers to that 3-0 lead. Out of the hold of Billy Osborne, and it is 10-0 Pittsburgh. Coach Mike Gottfried in his second year watching the interception and watching Billy Owens streaking down that sideline said all right head to the north end zone interception on the year. There's John Fox, defensive coordinator. And over on the other sideline, Joe Paterno, who will suffer his first loss ever at Pitt Stadium. He came in seven wins, no losses, and one tie. He'll be back. Remember, defense in the kicking game, that's what beat him. A field goal and interception return is what beat him. He knew it. He knew that was the strong part of the team. Hey. They are starting to pour out of the stands here at Pittsburgh. They're standing 20 deep over on the near sideline. You're going to have the biggest frat and sorority party going on right down here on the artificial surface. Well, remember, this will be the first win since 1969 for Pittsburgh in this stadium over Penn State. And that's cause for celebration, I guess, apparently. Well, and I think it also throws the bowl picture into an interesting uh, quandary. The uh, Panthers now go to 7-3. Pittsburgh has beaten Penn State. They've beaten Notre Dame right here. Penn State will go to 7-3, the defending national champions. So you know that both Pitt and Penn State will be bowl bound. Well, Penn State's got Notre Dame next week. Pitt has Kent State. Taken by Leroy Thompson. And Thompson down at the 44-yard line of Pittsburgh. Our Hartford player of the game, number 55 for Pittsburgh, Jerry Osofsky. 15 tackles, one sack, one fumble recovery, and a big pass broken up late in the game to help preserve an apparent 10-0 Pittsburgh upset over Penn State. Number 55, Osaski, led pit in tackles last year. Fourteen seconds left to go. Penn State trails by ten. Last one was picked off. Matt reloads, fires, puts up a floater and a Hail Mary. And this one is batted down and picked off again. Danny Crossman, the sophomore. Four seconds left, and they may not get to play these next four seconds. A cavalry charge from the end zone. Student body left in the form of a lot of Pitt Panthers. Final thoughts, Kevin. Well, I'd just like to say hats off to Quentin Jones and Gary Richard because, as we pointed out during the game, they played man-to-man -man coverage all night against Penn State while... Joe Paterno's guys weren't real imaginative. Those two corners allowed the other nine guys to stop the running game. And, Jim, that was the difference in this game. They shut out Penn State using nine guys on the line of scrimmage. A great man, a great coach, and two national championships to his credit. Joe Paterno, one of the true gentlemen in college sports, 
over several decades. And a young man whose career is on the way up, Mike Gottfried, who's helping to turn this program around at Pitt. A big upset. He's beaten Notre Dame this year. Now he upset the defending national champions. For Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly. Good night from Pittsburgh. Now let's go out west to Greg Papa and Dave Logan. For Todd Santis, a quarterback with a Mormon upbringing, the dream was obvious, attend Brigham Young University. But when the Cougars said no to a scholarship, Santis, a Californian, did some soul searching and landed at San Diego State. Last week, the ultimate irony was Todd's revenge, as at BYU, he became Division I-A's all-time career gainer through the air. When Santos takes a breather, junior tailback Paul Hewitt keeps the Aztecs on the go, and tonight with a strong game, could hit 1,000 yards on the year. When Colorado State graduated quarterback Kelly Stauffer, a major hole needed filling. Enter junior college transfer Scooter Molander, who after a slow start is piling up numbers with the best. Last week, a school record 449 yards passing. Molander combined with tailback Scott Whitehouse has at least one Ram offense bucking. Tonight, we greet you live from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego for a Western Athletic Conference meeting between the Rams of Colorado State and the Aztecs of San Diego State. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Papa. Welcome to San Diego, where the football fans are used to passing football. On Sunday, in the NFL for years, it was the Air Coriel attack triggered by Dan Fouts. Now, on Saturdays in college football in the WAC Conference, it is Air Stoltz triggered by Todd Santos. Let me bring in my partner, Dave Logan, who likes flying footballs. He played wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns for many years. We've talked about San Diego State's offensive efficiency through the air, but Colorado State is tough, the number 14 of the nation. Well, CSU has been very good the last five games. They've averaged over 480 yards of total offense of the games, 335 of that coming through the passing lane. So Scooter Molander has really done a very good job, and he's got a good contingent of wide receivers to throw to. All seniors all have had an exceptional career. J.D. Brookhart on the left, the leading receiver, 39 catches this year. Sanjay Beach, Todd Terrell, and Dewey DeRoll, all three of those guys averaging over 17 and a half yards per catch. So Molander has some help. And that's only half the story. Eight guys on their team have at least 15 receivers. Exceptions. Same story for Santos. He has hit nine guys at least ten times. Well, Todd Santos, with well over 10,000 yards of passing, you know that he's got a nice supporting crew to help him. He's had it for the last three years. This year, not much difference. San Diego State wide receivers Robert Claiborne, Alfred Jackson, and Monty Gilbreth have had good years. Kerry Reed Martin, the big tight end, has caught 36 passes. He is the second leading receiver. So Todd Santos, again, has a nice group to work with. And so far, we've been talking about offense because the respective defenses are very poor. But Colorado State does have a built an excuse they've been decimated by injury well it's been a tough year for Leon Fuller's crew if Leon had kept everybody healthy it still might have been a tough year they've had 13 changes defensively they've lost three of the starting four linebackers mm -hmm. their leading tackler last week Dave Munt goes out with a season ending knee injury so it's been a very bad year defensively and they tried to make up for it with a good offense so it should be a typical San Diego football game a lot of offense a lot of points ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Budweiser, Beastwood Age, for that clean, crisp...